and I already shared with you from Ministry of Healing. But today I want to share with you from a passage in the Bible. Um, not very, not very long. It's it's a quick reflection, and the book I'm using is not the one that we traditionally would take our reference from. This is from the Desire of Ages. Okay, so please allow me to that to deviate slightly from the Desire of Ages. But the the topic of this chapter, which is thirty nine, is entitled "Give He Them to Eat," and so we've been "Give He Them." to eat that's the topic okay so before I, I share this if we can just bow our heads and i'd just like to ask god's blessing and ask him also to bring out the message and the encouragement from from the word and from the reflection thank you lord for your blessings thank you for this time thank you for this beautiful day that you've blessed us with thank you for another opportunity to spend time together to reflect on your word and to cook and to be excited about what will happen tomorrow and how our lives will be transformed going forward. Bless your word and I pray that it will be understood and it will bring encouragement to that person, to all of us who are hearing and even to anyone who will hear it um, later when this is rebroadcast. We thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Now, <clears throat> Christ had retired to a secluded place with his disciples. We remember that. But on this rare season of peaceful quietness, this was soon to be broken. The disciples thought they had retired where they would not be disturbed. But as soon as the multitude missed the divine teacher, they inquired, where is he? Some among them had noticed the direction in which Jesus and his disciples had gone. Many went by land to meet them, while others followed in their boats and went across the water. The Passover was at hand, and from far and near, bands of pilgrims on their way to Jerusalem gathered to see Jesus. Additions were made to their number until they were assembled 5,000 men beside women and children. Before Christ reached the shore, a multitude were waiting for him, but he landed unobserved by them all and spent a little while apart with his disciples. From the hillside, he looked upon the moving multitude and his heart was stirred with sympathy. Interrupted as he was and robbed, robbed of his rest, he was not impatient. He saw a greater necessity demanding that his attention as he watched the people coming and still coming. He was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep not having a shepherd. Leaving his retreat, he found a convenient place where he could minister to them. They received no help from the priests and rulers, but the healing waters of life flowed from Christ as he taught the multitude the way of salvation. Now the story goes on. They were hungry after a while because they were lingering with him for a long time and they were very hungry. And the disciples came to him and they asked about food. And he said that there was no food to be found. Then someone muttered the, the phrase, which is the topic of this chapter, give he them something to eat. There was one lad in the crowd and this lad had five barley loaves and two small fishes. And somebody asked, but what is this? among so many. How far is this little morsel going to go? Now, most of us probably know the rest of this story. Jesus was able to take his little morsel and multiply it sufficiently so that it fed the 5,000 who were gathered. Now, normally when you hear of Jesus's parables, it says, 
it, it mentions the men, but don't forget that wherever the men are, there would be probably twice as much women. And then the women would also have children, yes? So we know that it fed a great multitude, the very, very small morsel. Now, the encouragement I want to leave with you from this is that we all have small, um, what we want to call small morsels, yes? That is within our reach. Now, if we hold that to ourselves and we do not make it available when the need arises, who is going to be benefited? Just ourselves, yes? And um, I imagine you will eat a belly full and then you'll burp and then you'll be satisfied, yes? But if you gave what you had into, into the hand of the Lord, or if you gave it to a cause, or you, when someone comes and asks for something, if you, if you break and share, it multiplies. And then it's going to create ripples beyond what you have done. And so today we're we are probably putting together our final recipes for tomorrow. And we're thinking mm, all of this is happening. But I would like you also to reflect on what aspect of this course going forward you can give. You can give them to eat. Yes, yes, you can give them to eat. You have food, you can give it to eat. But beyond the food, you have the opportunity to give someone a knowledge of Christ and to bring salvation to a soul. And so ask God, you know, what is my path forward <clears throat> going from here? Where do you want me to, to go? What is, what is your direction? How can I use what you have imparted to me to be a blessing or to be a tool that I can put in your hand for greater glory? And he will lead you. He will lead you. If he's asking you to prepare um, a small lunch every day so you can have it ready, so that when the crisis comes, you have something to share, you know, listen, whatever it is, listen and ask for his direction. And he's willing, he's, he's absolutely willing and he's eager to give us direction because he wants us to be join, jointly involved with him in this plan of redemption, which is what we are all here for. It's, it's not just about the cooking. The cooking is just the how do you say? The cooking is um, another step on the ladder, but the greater picture above all things and in all things that we're doing, don't forget that when it comes to the final analysis, it's about our journey and it's about our salvation. Yes. So may your soul be well, and I pray that you be blessed. I pray that whatever we do, um, we'll do all things to the glory of God. And I'll just end by saying that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart, we pray that it will be acceptable in God's sight. Lord, we give you thanks for your leading and for your guiding and for what you will do in the lives of every learner and every facilitator on this platform. We want to commit ourselves to you and ask that you will use us in a way that you have never used us before. Help us to be vessels through which others can be blessed and souls can be won for your kingdom so that when you come, you will be able to say to us, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of your Lord. Here, come to the banquet that is prepared for you because you have done my will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Davina. Amen. Thank you very much, Lloyd. Thank you very much. Are you hearing me? I am uh, hearing you. You're welcome. Over to you. Okay. All right. Lovely. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another session of the Natural Remedies Kitchen Vegan Nutrition Cooking and Nutrition Course. Our lesson outline for today is very much of an open plan. Today we will do some revision for the exam. Then we are going to review some of the menus for those menus that I have not given feedback to us yet. But some I have given feedback in the group, some have already given feedback by email. I have not covered all of them as yet. So for those who has not yet been covered and you would like to 
present your menu for your exam, we could review that right here, give you some feedback right here. And then after that, we're going to go into the theoretical aspect of the exam, which um, Laura will do with you later on closer. That will be the last thing. And then we will let you out early today, if possible, so you can get to go and start your pre-prepping for your exam, which begins tomorrow morning, I believe 8 a.m., but I'm just wondering, I think one of my colleagues advised me that the room would have been open a little bit earlier. I'm not 100% sure, but they will say something later on. Now, I know most... Well, I know everyone has been enjoying the course. I don't know anyone that has not been enjoying the course. Um, so just want to say thank you all for your commitment and dedication um, that you have exhibited so far for the, for the past three, four weeks now. Um, it is fantastic, and it is good to see all the efforts being put out. It is good to see people trying the recipes, even if it is later on in the day, um, you know, after the class session is gone. They're trying it. It's it's um, it's very motivating for us as directors to see the efforts that you have put out in um, getting this right and 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 accomplishing this. So we are very pleased and honored to um, be helping you uh, with these recipes and with your cooking. All right. So the exam, by the way, is pretty easy. It's a yes or no, A, B, C, one, two, three, true or false um, kind of exam. Nothing that you have to write an essay for. And we're just going to ask you a few questions, which you may get on the exam, you may not get on the exam. And you may get questions now in terms of the revision from myself, and it may be from any one of my colleagues that may pop a question up at you at any point in time. And if it is the same person's answering all the time, then we may call on others. We may pop some names in just to help to get your mind ticking, all right? Um, after the review, you may realize that you need to um, go back over some of your, 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 your lessons to just look at a few things. Maybe, maybe not, maybe you're all good. All right, so with that said, I just want to ask the first question is, any one person, give me two ways of doing yogurt, vegan yogurt. Um, peppers, um, chili pepper in it. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, that's one way, yeah. Anyone yeah. else? We is using a starter from another yogurt. Live starter from a yogurt. Live starter from another yogurt. Great. Any other way from anyone else? Um, added in probiotics. Yep. Excellent. Another way. Any other way from anyone else? I'm saying um, the strawberry yogurt made out of um, natural yogurt and you blend the strawberries and uh, mix, I think with coconut, with coconut um, cream. Okay. All right. Yeah. And so so that is what you would use a, 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 another yogurt as a starter. Yeah. Okay, any other way from anyone else? What else can we use as another starter? Carl? I was thinking of using, um, what do you call it? Um, silk and tofu, sorry. Yeah, wait. Take this one. Put this one down for the mouth. So, has anyone, uh, has okay. everyone forgotten that the water that you soak the peas in can be used, a couple of tablespoons from that water can be used as a starter for your yogurt? 
don't forget that because that is like Thank cheap, you. inexpensive, and that just definitely fulfills what Spirit of Prophecy says when nothing goes to waste. Ooh. Not even the water that you soak the beans in. All right. Yes, it's um it's the final day. Loy, are you talking to us? No? Okay, I figured. Because it didn't really make much sense. <laughs> So, what can you do with, what is Akara? Isn't it the leftovers of anything that you're blending up? So you can just, your Akara balls, you mix it with the psyllium husk and you make it all look nice. It ends up tasting, looking like falafels. Yes, yes, yes. So the Akara is ideally the leftover from... The soya bean, but you just call it a, a chickpeas akara or black bean akara or it's a husk that remains the trash that once upon a time, what do you used to do with your trash from your stuff? Probably you scrap them in the bin. <laughs> but not anymore. Or in the compost. Or in the compost. All right. You can still go in the compost, but no need to feed the compost with so much nutrients. The compost can survive on less nutrients than that. <laughs> right, so um, what is agar agar? Agar agar is, uh, is used in cakes to thicken, to, thick, to hold to the cake together. Okay. Um, Anybody else? Any other answer? It's a it's gelatin. Ah, it's vegan. It's like a vegan gelatin. Yeah. That that's a, that's a brilliant answer. Any other answer? It's made from seam in. Okay. That's all right. Vegan. Yeah. That that that's what I'm looking for. It's a uh, made from seaweed and it is vegan gelatin. All right. Um, what is kalamanuk? Never heard that one. Mm -hmm. Didn't hear what you said, Don. I said pass. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I like that answer, Don. <laughs> Somebody else, can you take up that one, please? <laughs> what is Kalamanuk? Could you, you see? Her? Marlene, Marlene, hand is up and Cody's hand is up. Answer. It's the, I think they're referring to the black salt. Is that Excellent, part of the black Cody. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Another name for the black salt, Marlene? I have it. Marlene, you're on mute, so I don't know if you're talking. Is that egg, egg salt? That is indeed the egg salt. All right, brilliant. What is corn? Is it a mushroom? Is it... What is it? Is it a mushroom? What is corn? Made from mushroom. It's a mycoprotein. Excellent, excellent. And what does that mean? <laughs> It means it's a, it's a carbohydrate. No, 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 it's not a carbohydrate. It is, it is a mold. It is a type of mold. It is not mushroom, though. So, it's, it's a are, plant. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say it's a plant-based protein used as a meat substitute. Excellent. That's a very, very good answer as well. Now. Name some foods that are rich in fiber. Oats. Excellent. Wow. All of the peas and beans. Brilliant. Brilliant. Super. Beg your pardon, say it again, Anna. Oh, sorry. Okay, all right, so that wasn't for us. Yeah, that, that, those are some brilliant answers, but any more answers? 
foods that are rich in fiber? Whole grain um, cereals. Yes, that's good. That's fiber rich. So, how about your vegetables and your fruits? Mm. Potatoes and your dark leaf, leafy green veg. Exactly. But how about your fruits? We get vitamin C from fruits. You get fiber from fruits as well. All that roughage is fiber. You get fiber from your fruits, your vegetables, your beans, your seeds, your root vegetables, your healthy grain. I mean, all your grains. Those are rich in fiber. Why do we not recommend bleached or white flour? It's devoid of nutrients. Exactly. And um, the bran has been removed during processing. Yeah. Exactly. And given to the pigs. <laughs> okay. What is an ideal breakfast for a sedentary or brain worker? Fruits. Excellent. Anything more to that answer? Some Fruits legumes and nuts and seeds. Excellent, excellent. Fruit, legumes, nuts, and seeds. Yep, so your legumes could be your plant-based milk. It could even be a piece of cheesecake. That would make it even nicer. <laughs> All right, but yes, that, that's, that's fantastic. And if you are a child, if you've got a child running around outside all day long at school playing and studying and playing, what, how much serving of carbohydrates should they have? Let's say they're about 10 years old. Up to how much serving of carbohydrate they can have as a daily recommended allowance? Five. Three. 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 Okay, but that's good. You're doing you're doing well though. What are what is considered to be breakfast hygiene? To eat uh, regularly. Excellent answer. Superb. Sorry, Tavina. Uh, can you repeat that? Repeat the question. I didn't hear. Sorry. What is meant by breakfast hygiene or food hygiene? Breakfast hygiene, uh, particularly. It's it's to eat regularly, to eat on time, to have um you know, your set meal times and to stick by that. So if breakfast is six o'clock every morning, then it is six o'clock Monday, Tuesday to Sunday. It's also uh, the most important meal at the day. So it should be big and nutrition. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So does skipping breakfast helps you to lose weight no or way. to gain weight? Gain weight instead. Mostly okay, healthy. all right. Um, tell me three minerals that are important for the support of high blood pressure. Potassium. Yeah, excellent. Magnesium. Mm, brilliant. Three minerals that are... Yeah, there's one more. Potassium, magnesium, another one. Potassium? That was already said. Potassium and magnesium was already said. One oh, left. One left. What was the question? I didn't hear the question. Yeah. Sorry. The three minerals that are important in terms of reducing high blood pressure. Calcium. Calcium. Calcium is the other one. Okay. Um, let's get you some more questions here. Name three essential ingredients that should be in a vegan's pantry. Anything that's mentioned on the essential ingredients list? Plant milk. Which milk? Plant 
milk. Okay, I thought you said goat milk. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Soya beans. Yeah. Cashew nuts. So Soya beans, cashew nuts, yes. All right. Tell and, me. Uh, and all types of seeds. All types of nuts. I see and herbs. Did somebody say all types of teas? Seeds. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> yes. Grains, grains as well. The ancient grains, yes. All right, in terms of the essential ingredients list, tell me three ingredients that you need to possibly order online that is not so easy to find in your local health food store. Agar, agar. Agar, agar, Exalt. fantastic. Egg salt. Egg salt is another one, yeah. Psyllium husk. Psyllium husk, brilliant. I know in my store. All right. Lecithin. That's, lecithin, that's another one that is pretty hard to get. Tell me another name for Spanish omelette or another dish that is similar to Spanish omelette. Fritata. Frittata, fantastic. Mm. And another one. What is a quiche? Frittata. It's a French tart, so it is very similar to a frittata made in almost, you know, same sort of way. Tell me three ways how you can use clay. Eat Drink it, put it on your I face, your facial, rub. and put it on your body to detox. Excellent. Any Anything that you need to note in terms of putting it on your body for a detox? It mustn't dry out. It needs to always remain moist. All right, brilliant. Okay, tell me three crucial ingredients in a vegan loaf. Psyllium husk. Grains. You know, Grains, psyllium husk. Lentil. So Ancient I take that as beans. Say it again. Ancient grain. Yeah, ancient grain is said. Um, psyllium husk is said. Beans are said. Any other? Onion, celery. Okay. A liquid for the color. Garlic. Which liquid? Who said, who said something about liquid? I did. No, what did you say? I said a liquid, stock, or something like that. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. Okay. All right, what are some of the things when you make a grain loaf? What are some of the other things that you can make from the very same mixture? Sausages, Sausages. burgers, mm -hmm. it falls. Excellent. Is there anything specific that you would probably want to do with it to turn it into burgers from a loaf to burgers or from a loaf to meatballs? Is it cornstarch? Excellent. Excellent. You may want to increase the cornstarch to help it to hold together better. Or some more oats. Enchilada, bean burrito, quesadilla. Which cuisine are these from? Mexican. Mexican, Mexican cuisine. When you go to Greek cuisine, what one of the main ingredients in terms of giving it a really nice flavor? What's the flavor that is essential to bring out the culture, the traditional um, flavor in the culture? Olive oil. Cumin. Cumin. Olive oil is also a good one, yes. But cumin, because they do use a lot of sesame seed oil as well. Okay, so for Mediterranean cuisine... Eastern European and all, what's one of the key essential ingredients that you need to use to sort of bring out the flavor of the culture? 
paprika. Okay, good one. Any any other? Fresh um, parsley. Going good. Eel. All right, nice. Okay, that's sounding really good so far. Name two types of soups. Cream. Cream. That's correct. What what else did I hear? Beetroot soup. Um, well, types like like I've heard cream soup. That's one type of soup. A vegetable soup. Healthy soup. Which which one, um, Anna? A healthy Minnesota. soup. A hearty soup, yes, you've got a hearty, hearty soup. yes, sorry, hearty yeah. soup. Yeah. And then you've got something like a velute, where you literally just blend out the vegetables, so it's like a pureed soup. Minnesota. Okay, and then you've also got a clear soup, which is like a consomme. Oh, what's, is, the, what's the name of the blended uh, vegetable soup? The velute? Velute. Or puree. Is cream not still velute as well? By the cream, you sort of um, do the bechamel as the base. Or some people add cream, which is like a shortcut. But you do the velute, the, the, the bechamel as the base. Okay. Okay. What are some of the health benefits of psyllium husk? Colon cleansing. It's high on uh, fiber. Hi. So it cleans your uh, your your um, intestine. No, your colon very well. Excellent. Yes, it does. Okay, tell me what's one of the key ingredients in a vegan cheese? Two Sarge. key ingredients. I want to hear two or three. Name name some of the key Ega, ingredients. Ega. Yeah, Ega, Ega one. Which one? Starch. Yes, you can also have some starch. Yeah, another milk. Milk. Some milk. Yeah. Yes, another. Um, is it is it olive? I mean, um, yes. Coconut You can have that as well. Any other? I'm looking for something tangy. Lemon. Lemon. Exactly. Lemon. All right. So now I'm looking for something umami. Yeast. Excellent. Yeast. Excellent. Yeah. Nutritional yeast. Yep. All right. Brilliant. Yeast. What can you use instead of apple cider vinegar in recipes? Lemon. Lemon. No Lemon. That sounds good. What can you use instead of citric acid in recipes? Lemon. Lemon. Sounds and good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Lemon, lime. Yep. Perfect. Now, how many meals can you use olives and avocado in? And we're, that we're onto like food combination now. Yes, Is it not two tablespoons? Of what we're talking about? Olive oil and um, all meals, both meals, breakfast and lunch. Excellent. That's the correct answer, Genevieve. So olives can be used for both breakfast as well as for dinner. Okay. Likewise, sorry, Davina, there's a bit of delay on my device. Can you repeat the question? Because I'm sorry, I cannot, I can't. Okay, yeah. the question was um, how many meals can you use avocado and olives in? Or which meals? So it can both be used for breakfast as well as um, dinner. Okay, I thought you, you meant meals as, as measurement. Oh, no, not meals, not meals, <laughs> meals. Okay, how much grains is supposed to be in a bread if it is labeled um, whole grain? What's the minimum amount of grains that can be in a bread if it is labeled whole grain bread? 50%. Huh? One. One? Or two? Percentage of whole grain. How much percentage of whole grain? What's the minimum percentage of whole grain that can be in a bread for it to be labeled whole grain bread or whole 
whatever. 80%. No, not 90. 30%. No, not 30. I know you would want to think that it should be at least 90%, isn't it? For it to be able to be called whole grain, no? <laughs> That'd be very ambitious. 14. It's not even 30. No? Go oh, low. 15. 16. Oh. I know. Where were you? Did, did Bussy not present this? I don't recall. Sorry, it have been a 16 what? 16 grams. 16, 16 grams of whole grain. Um, hold on, let me just share share the information with you on a, the slide. Bear with me, let me find that. <laughs> what the whole grain council say. Oh, somebody needs to be let in. Can can somebody let in Sharon for me, please? Okay, I'm letting her in. Okay, so according to the Whole Grain Council, products bearing the 100% stamp indicates that all its grain ingredients are true whole grain. There is a minimum requirement of 16 gram, which is a full serving of whole grain per labeled serving for the product using the 100% stamp. Okay, so... Just 16 grams in a bread. Okay, let's see. Is there anything else from here that you need to? What is about a serving of bread? It's not on this page. You, you, you can read if you want, but it's not the answer is not there <laughs> um what is how much slices of bread is a serving two slices <laughs> that's what i thought one 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 let's see what is our best source of energy? Sunlight. Carbohydrate. Yes, we get our best source of energy from our grains. What is whole meal referring to? Fiber. All the grains intact. Okay, yes, so... Whole meal is referring that all the grains are intact, right? Brown usually contains about 85% of the original grain and white 75%. Okay, um, let me stop sharing that. So, in terms of food combination, what can you combine with melons? Nothing. Nothing. Eat it on its own. On the melon. Unless, unless it's watermelon. Watermelon you eat on its own. All melons you eat on their own. Mm -hmm. I thought All you could combine other types of melons with, that, with each other. Yes, you can combine other melons with each other. Yeah, that's what I mean. Okay, all right, all right, okay, all right. So why is it that you do not combine anything else with melons? Because they've got a high they water content. They have they, a high what? They have a high water sugar level. Content. They have a high water content. Right, it's, Nicole. It's absorbed through the small intestine very quickly. Very quickly. Its digestion is like wop, 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 wop. It's almost like water. So just imagine you eat your melons with some nuts. Uh, or you eat the nuts first and then the melons after. Just imagine that melon is going to sit there waiting for the nuts to digest and it's going to start rotting on your stomach. And then you're going to start belching melon all day long and then you're going to say, oh, actually, I don't eat watermelon because whenever I eat it, it comes back up on me. <laughs> that's not the watermelon coming back up on you. That's um, the food combination and the way how you've chosen to eat it by eating the 
the wrong eating it at the wrong time all right um can you combine tomato with lettuce yes okay so what is tomato cucumber and fruits that are vegetables like that what are they technically um considered as vegetables okay so they're called garden vegetables i don't know if that was touched if brother benjamin had mentioned that but they are called garden vegetables um let me see if i can just share quickly the food combination chart Just trying to find it All right, so I'll be sharing this just to give you a quick little revision of this chart. Okay, so in terms of combination, just to go over this as well, and some of you may find this um, useful for your exams. In fact, this chart is useful for your life, for your house, for your family. All right, so what you have here is acid fruits, which are things like your citruses, your grapefruit, your lamb, your lemon, your orange, your tangerine, even cranberry when they're very sour. Uh, I don't know if it's when they're very sour, but I just know that cranberries are also considered acid fruits, but you may also find them in sub-acids as well. Um, some some researchers list them sometimes in the sub-acid group as well, but they're always in the acid um, section. Kumkat, mandarin, satsumas, blood orange, what they call Buddha's hand, which is... And I don't even like that name. <laughs> don't know why they call it Buddha's hand. Um, citron, clementine, pomelo, tangelo, caracara. These are acid or citrus fruits, considered um, acid fruits. These can go with just about everything. Except... Group six, where only lemons and cranberry can go. So what is in group six? Your legumes. So your be beans, you're making a bean salad. You can squeeze your lemon. You can squeeze your lemon over it. You can throw some cranberries in as well, right? In your, in your chickpea salad. Or, I mean, whatever it is you're going to use the group six for. But just, I I'm just saying salads. All right, so in terms of another food combination, what is not compatible with grains? Just about any groups is compatible with grains. Just about any group. So grains is number five. And as you can see, number five is fairly compatible with number one and actually number seven which number seven by the way is melons so fairly compatible which on, means uh, on the screen the numbers on top are not showing clearly you have to. oh but if you look can you see the writing what's in the writing no. Can you see that now? The number is on top? But when I move down, I will, it will have to go for me to see the bottom aspect of the chart. So anyway, what number seven is, it is the watermelon, the cantaloupe, the cassava, the crenshaw, the honeydew, the musk melon, the Persian, gala melon, the... I don't even know what that word is. All right, so it is 
not fully compatible. So if you have digestive problems, I don't go for what is fairly compatible because you may have regurgitation. You may find yourself regurgitating. If you know you have a weak stomach or a stomach that gives problems, you go easy. Okay, vegetables, leafy flowers, root, like your asparagus, your artichokes, what are they not compatible with? They are not compatible with number one and number two, except the lemon. So your cabbage, your cauliflower, your cavallo nero, they are your, 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 what do you call it? Your fennel, your kale. So number one is not compatible with number nine, except your lemons. And number two is not compatible with number nine. So let us not see your beetroot salad coming forth with any apricots on it or any bananas or any apples. Okay. So just a little bit of reminder there of some food combination. Let's just go down to see some health principles which are also on this chart. All right, so chewing food thoroughly is important for proper digestion. Why is that so? Why is it important to chew your food thoroughly? How does that affect because your the, saliva? The digestion starts in the mouth. Excellent. It begins in the mouth. What were you saying about the saliva, Genevieve? Saliva will um, masticate the food and that because it begins in teeth, the mouth. Teeth, teeth masticate the food, though. <laughs> Sorry? I said the, the teeth, teeth masticate, masticate the food. And mix it with the saliva, yeah. And mix it with the saliva, right. Right, so it, it comes together. What you're both saying is 100% correct. It's the same thing. That digestion begins in the mouth. So we should keep the food in the mouth as long as we can before we swallow it. So chew it thoroughly and slowly. Don't cut and swallow and don't shovel it down and don't drink it down either. So what does that say about our smoothies and our juices? What does it say about them and our porridges? Chew them. Chew them. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's not, <laughs> yeah. I like that. That's a good one for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Why should we not overeat? It's a sin. It's a sin. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Any other answer? The extra you burden the for the gain. stomach, for the body. Extra, extra blessing. Extra weight. Extra it's blessings burden. in terms burden, of weight. Burden. <laughs> extra burden. <laughs> All right. Yes, they they they're all correct. Why it's should over, you... it's over, sorry, it overtaxes the system, the stomach as well. It does exactly. Uh, why is it impro important to eat our fruits and our vegetable? Eat your fruits first, or your vegetables first? Why is it important to eat them first? They digest at different rates. So yeah. So the fruit has to be first because it would digest quicker. I want to cause fermentation. Yes, exactly. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. So stems are stalks of plants. Like as, so when you hear about the word, when you hear a vegetable being called a stem vegetable or a stalk vegetable, it's um the things like the asparagus, the celery, the rhubarb, the wild rice, and leek. So these are called stems. Um, you have leaves of plants or edible leaves. So you're talking about kale, your mustard, your cabbage, your cauliflower, your Brussels, um, your broccoli, your pop chow, your Chinese leaf, um, your cavallo nero, your spinach. These are your edible leaves, which we, most of the times that's what we just call vegetable anyway. Um, flowers of plants. And you have your artichokes are your also your flowers, your cauliflower, your broccoli. And then of course you've got those flowering flower like your sorrel is also a flower. Um, 
you know you have those edible flowers as well like the dandelion flowers they what's that very elegant flowers that put out these pink petals and they're very often using thai cuisines to garnish it and you will see even the thai ladies cherry blossom maybe which one orchid orchid cherry. Oh, and orchid. Well. Edible orchid. So these are food as well, and you can use them to garnish. You can use them to garnish. They make most beautiful garnish, edible flowers do. You can eat orchids. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You have edible orchids. I don't know if the same orchid that you probably have in your house is growing now, if that's edible. But no, most of them are not. Most of them are poisonous, so you have to be specific. Okay. Well, it does say edible orchid. Um, that's what I learn, and when I want to purchase, I go to the market and I order and I purchase edible orchid. So, and I use that and I eat it, and I'm still here. And I've used it many times, and I've never been sick. All right. Um, fruits of herbaceous plants, things like your tomatoes, your aubergines, your peppers, your cucumbers your pumpkins, your zucchini, your squashes, and these are called also garden vegetables. Okay, so let me just read this. There are several fruits that are vegetables that develop from the blossom of the nightshade family, like tomatoes, aubergines, eggplants, and peppers. These garden vegetables, often referred to as fruits like potatoes, breadfruit, squash, pumpkin, cucumber, chocho, okra, are vegetables and should not be combined with tree fruits like apples, peaches, guava, mangoes, and pears. These should be eaten as vegetables. Do you get that sentence? <laughs> huh? Apple jeans and, and which yeah. one? Okra. Okra. Uh, chocho, okra, pumpkin, squash, cucumber, eggplant, or aubergine, whichever one you call it, our garden vegetables, tomatoes, peppers, these are garden vegetables. Why should we not take too great a variety of vegetables in the stomach at one meal? It's, it affects the digestive system. Exactly. So the next statement here says, too great a variety of foods should not be taken into the stomach at one meal for fermentation is set up and injurious results are felt. Subsisting on a diet of fruits and grains properly prepared in the most simple natural form is the very best way to preserve the health of the digestive organs which do the work required for the nourishment of the human orga organism. Okay. Let's see. Is there anything more on this chart? I think this is the end of the chart. So um, these charts are available for sale. You're in the group, so I will tell you when they're ready, unless if you want to apply pressure on me and order and give me a deadline, <laughs> then maybe by then I'll, be, I'll edit it faster. We will give you a deadline. <laughs> <laughs> You're turning a Myrtle on me, eh? <laughs> All right. Um, I heard that. <laughs> I thought you were still driving. <laughs> All right. Um, Loy, is Loy available or anybody can just share that revision? All right, no, 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 I can share it. I'm going to share a revision document with you, but just bear with me one moment. There's a vehicle blowing at my gate. Hold on, finally seem like my things that I ordered for the class, they're finally arriving at the end of the class. Hold on, it's DHL. <laughs> I got my food dehydrated today as well, at the end of the classes. 
Thank you very much. I'll still make my biscuits with them. All right. <laughs> uh, I have to reorder mine because mine died. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, well, it served 10 years, so it's really? served, it served its time. Ooh. Yeah. Any questions while the bean is away? So what do you order um, the dehydrator? I bought uh, the Nesco Garden Master. That's the type I use. Um, they are cheaper ones on the market, but like I say, that one lasted 10 years and I, I'm sticking with it. I'm gonna reorder the same one. Okay. So it's, it's by Nesco, N-E-S-C-O, and the, um, the name is Garden Master. It can stack up to 30 sheets of um, 30 sheets of, of food and dry at one time. Yeah, I think we have to look and see if we can get it in the UK because one of the links I think that you sent earlier before, earlier in the course, I looked at it and it said like 300 pounds to get it, like 200 pounds, 200 and something pound delivery to the UK. Wow. I said, uh, nope. <laughs> did, you, did you try Amazon? Did you try your UK? No, I will. I will. I will try the UK. Um, yeah, the UK Amazon. One, yeah. Okay. Hi. So, go ahead, Harriet. Uh -oh. Davina back. Yeah, go. Yes, I'm back. But ask the question that you were asking. Um, when you put your water out to uh, oxidize, is it oxidize? Yeah. Polarize. Mm -hmm. uh, what benefits are you supposed to experience and how soon after you've started it do you experience these changes? Okay, or is so for a solarized water, the cells, your body cells actually absorbs them better. So instead of you drinking a glass or two of water and have to run to the bathroom because it just went through you, now your body actually uses the water um, versus it goes in and right out, in and right out. You know, if you haven't been drinking water in a long time and you start drinking water, that usually happens. Yeah. Um, it doesn't do that. So the body actually gets to, to, um, to use the water. It utilizes the water for its functions better. Okay, all right, fine, thank you. Mm -hmm. What if you put lemon in your water? Does that help the body to absorb it better as well in the same way? I just know the sunlight is what does that. You know, in the olden days, all the water tanks and the water barrels were outside and the sun, yeah. was, the sun was hitting it all day. And um, that's what brings the water alive. You're going to actually taste a difference in the water. It tastes so much better. Yes, and it does. You're going to be does. amazed. You're gonna be and amazed. only problem is I have only plastic bottle. <laughs> no, you got to get a glass bottle or even, even a, a ceramic bowl or a baking dish. You can put that and just cover it like. What about my stainless steel mixing bowls? You need ceramic or glass, no metal, no, no stainless steel, ceramic or glass only. Can you store it in the fridge after it's been in the sun? Huh? Can you store it in the fridge after it's been in the sun? No, you, you, it needs to be room temperature. You drink water at room temperature. Yeah, I do, but if I want to keep, if I've done too many bottles, can I put it in the fridge? Water don't spoil, does it? No, no, you don't put it in the fridge. If you do not utilize, if you do not utilize what you put out in the sun the previous 24 hours, you need to put it back out again. It's oh, good okay. for 24 hours after you've done it. Okay. Okay, back to me. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Which statement is correct? Adventists who are vegans live longer than Adventists who are vegetarians. And Adventist vegetarians live longer than Adventist meat eaters. Or, let me let Fiona in. Is it that vegans lack calcium and B12? Or is it that most Adventists are vegans? Or is it that homemade soya milk is a good source of B12? Tell me what's wrong with each statement. What's wrong with A? Or what is right with A? A is That's correct. correct. A is correct. Okay. All right. 
I feel like it could be be. correct, but it might also not be correct because it depends, though, isn't it? You can be an unhealthy vegan. Yes. (laughs) Yes. They're just doing what comes out of the studies. So on balance. It's about all the eight keys to a good life, healthy life. All right. So I want to, I want to say A would be the right answer. But I feel that we can find good and bad things in each statement. Yeah, A is the correct answer. Um, what What do you think about B? Vegans like calcium and B12. Is this true or is this false? False. It's false because um, you can balance the the vitamins with other food that um or, or that you 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 combine with your your daily food okay anybody else but want to give another can i say you have to be statement. aware sorry the statement as well can be true because if you don't have the right variety of food then you can be lacking in calcium and b12 as well yes exactly so can meat eaters when people are not vegan and vegetarian. So, <laughs> so can we what? So can people who eat meat and people who are vegetarian? Yeah, it's not a true statement. statement. It's not true. It's just about what you, what you're eating, really. So as yeah. a vegan, if you're eating the right food, then you'll get all that you need. And um, there there are a lot of meat eaters who actually lack B12 because their guts are destroyed. <laughs> their colons are destroyed from their terrible eating so they're not absorbing um, their B12s and this statement they make this statement because they believe or they are trying to purport that you can only get B12 and calcium from dead food but when I say dead food no in this instance I mean flesh food or milk or cheese or egg or so but you can what are some of the vegan sources of calcium pumpkin seeds Mm -hmm. seeds 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 in general yeah name a few seeds pumpkin sesame sunflower Mm -hmm. go on anybody else add two more any that she did not mention Flat chia. seed, chia seed. seed Excellent. Yeah. There's one more. I haven't heard anyone with on this course that is very popular. Chia seeds. Poppy seeds. Poppy, poppy seeds. seeds. Yeah, poppy seeds. I was hoping popular would, um, <laughs> you know, um, make the connection. Poppy seeds, very popular as well, and very rich sources of um, these um, trace minerals and essential minerals, by the way. Essential meaning you need to be getting them from your food. So, all right. Um, sources of vegan B12. Sorry, sorry to be in there. Um, oh, go on, go on, carry on. Right. Sources, any, name me a few sources of vegan B12. Mushroom. Soya milk. Soya, fortified soya milk. Mm-hmm. In your mouth, in the morning. Yeah, in your mouth, in the morning, yes, yes. New nutrition. Yes, yes. Chickpeas. Yes. Chickpea? Yeah. I don't remember if I teach you that. Maybe. Um because they produce milk. You what you can what I know about those things like your corella, your spirulina. Oh yes. Yeah. And your seaweed. Anything that's you, 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 dark green you, things that grow close to the ground or something as well, isn't it? Closest to the ground. They the yes, 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 that's true. Okay, why does Adventist meat eaters live longer than their non Adventist counterparts? Is it because they eat mostly um, organic oh, meat? They, because they eat no. over Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The answers are there. We're going to choose one. Is it because they eat mostly organic meat? 
Or is it because they do not consume harmful substances like alcohol, tobacco, and caffeine? Or is it because they are baptized and believe in God? <laughs> or is it none of the above? Why does Adventist meat eaters live longer than their non-Adventist counterparts? They don't, do they? They do. B. B. B is B. the answer, B. yeah, because B. they do B. not consume B. harmful B. substances like alcohol, tobacco, mm -hmm. and caffeine. They do, Genevieve. Adventist meat eaters actually do live longer than meat eaters in the world. Really? Yes, they do. When a package... Well, I think we've covered that already. Mm -hmm. um, but I lost it again. When a package says whole grain, how much grams of whole grain should... It at least contained to be labeled whole grain. 16. 16. Okay. A protein found in wheat, rice, spelt, and barley that is highly inflammatory and many people are sensitive to it. What is it? Is it gluten? Is it amino acid? Is it lecithin? Is it pectin? What is it? Gluten. 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 Okay. Select the gluten free grains from this list. All right, before I even ask that question, is couscous wheat? Yes. 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 It's a derivative. Okay. All right. Is bulgur wheat? Yes. 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 Okay. Is rice wheat? No. 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 Okay. Grain. No, it's a grain. It's a grain. It's, it's a grain, but it, I mean, wheat is a grain as well, right? So don't forget, wheat is actually a grain. So from these grains here, I'm just asking which one of them has wheat or has gluten. Um, it, does whole wheat flour has gluten? Yes. 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 Okay. Does cornmeal have gluten? No. No. Does no. millet have gluten? No. No. Does buckwheat have wheat? No. Yes. No. no. Who said yes? I heard a yes. No. I heard a it's yes. A no, a no, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. Now. All right. I just want to make sure that, you know, I want to make sure that you have a good understanding of grains before we end this course. So let me run something by you again, right? Most of the answers are correct, but I can see from the responses that not everybody is 100% clear on the difference between grains, whole grains, whole meal. And yes, the thing is wholly confusing. It's worse than a jigsaw puzzle. All right. <laughs> All right, let's go. This is a grain right here. This is a grain. But before I get to that, we're going to look at some of the grains. Barley is a grain. Flour is a grain. Millet is a grain. Wheat is a grain, right? I'm... Um, um, let me go to even a better slide because that's a scriptural one. So here we go. This is a good slide to take a screenshot of this. All right, get your screenshot. Get your screenshot. I'm going to grab myself a cup of water. Sorry, can somebody take a screenshot and post it on this, please? Yeah, if you take a screenshot and post it in the group so everybody can have a copy of that page. That would be very kind. So, looking at the grain, and we're going to read over the side here, to the right. Two people waiting. 
let's let them in. So, amaranth is a grain. Who knows amaranth? Who eats amaranth or has seen it in the supermarket? I do. Yes. All right. So that is a grain. It's a gluten-free grain. Right? Has no gluten whatsoever. So flowers made from amaranth, you will find it a little bit sandy because the gluten is what gives the flower that nice stretch. Right? The gluten is what makes you can knead a dumpling and it springs back at you. All right? That is what the gluten does. Gluten is a protein which is found in wheat, spelt, rye, and barley. So that is what gluten is. So when you talk about gluten-free grains, it is anything else, any other grain outside of these four. So these are some ancient grains we have right here. Buckwheat, even though it has the word wheat on it, surprisingly it's not a, has no wheat whatsoever. It has no gluten whatsoever in it. It's gluten-free and it's popular amongst raw foodies since it need little processing is needed. Then you have farro, you also have frike, you have kamut, you have kaniwa, which is like baby quinoa, right? You have millet, not a gluten-free grain, and again, you have quinoa. Rye, it's rye spelt and wheat, rye spelt wheat and barley have gluten. Right, so those four grains, rice, spelt, wheat, and barley, even though they are ancient grains, they have gluten in them. However, I want to say this most so back in the days in the Bible time, we see that wheat was very important, it was even more nutritious and healthier than barley, right, and used more and was cost more as well, more valuable. What has happened to wheat? Not like it has lost its place, no. We have had our wheat, the main wheat that we are getting on the shop shelf now is a hybridized stuff or genetically modified. It's also in almost every processed ingredients because of its stability, it has good stabilizing abilities. As a result, it is used in a lot of processed foods to help to keep them stable, increase their shelf life, hold them together better so they don't fall apart. Um, you will find that if you go and you want to buy, for example, if you go in the supermarket and you buy corn pieces, to hold it together, they have wheat inside of it. If you buy stock, to hold it together, they have wheat inside of it. Almost everything on the supermarket shop shelf has some wheat in it because it it is it's a good stabilizer, right, and a good binder. Now, because it is because we are getting it so often in our foods, in every single thing, we are we are eating too much of it. So it's irritating the gut lining. It is contributing to things like leaky gut and all sort of um gut disorders so that's the problem that we're having with wheat because it is now genetically modified it is having massive effects on our health because we're also eating too much of it too regularly once upon a time you used to eat maybe a slice please mute please mute please mute anna please mute Please mute. No, it's just something so bad. Uh, Can somebody mute uh, Anna for me? Okay. I think I have mute her. I hope that's what I did. All right. Right. So these are just some of your grains. These are grains. Now, Wheat is also a grain. Amaranth is a grain. Barley is a grain. Buckwheat is a grain. Quinoa is actually a seed, but it comes in the grain family as well. Right? Um, 
millet is a grain, kamut is a grain, frike is a grain. These are all grains. And some of these you've never heard of them. That's why they're called, uh, they called ancient grains because nobody uses them anymore. We use mainly wheat. That is what the whole world uses now as a grain. Wheat, 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 wheat. Thank you, Tina. Yeah? Yes, I, you know, for you, I've never tried buckwheat because I just thought that it had... Um, Who, who's making that noise? <laughs> Lord. Yeah, sorry. I said, I said, that's the reason why I've never bought buckwheat because I just thought that it was... Um, wheat. It had uh, wheat in there, so I've never actually had that. No, and it's very nice, actually. So go ahead now oh. that you know. Yes. Yeah. Can we, Sabina, sorry, I know this is, I know we're having a test, but. No, we're not having we a really, test. Um, oh, sorry. We're just, okay, we're just talking. <laughs> yeah. can, we, um, can we have some ideas of how to cook, what, how to cook some of these things? Because I know it'll be, you can just cook it like rice, but that's a bit boring. Like, yeah, but when I remember the first I weekend, to, I was trying to learn am, amaranth food was, I think, and it just came out like some kind of pudding, or it was really horrible anyway. It was a long time ago. I just okay. need a bit of direction. I don't know if everybody else does, but I definitely do. Yeah, so these can go into your, your grain loaf, or your nut loaf, or your roast. These make a nice binder in your in your thing, and they provide a lot of energy and they provide a lot they're good sources of protein as well so they can go in your loaf your burgers your sausages these things they can also make crackers they can make flatbreads they can make porridges so i have a friend in the states he often mixes all the grains with his oats or he just cooks them by himself as porridge you can use them to make puddings all sort of desserts Look, they're gorgeous like that so just as though you'd make like a cornmeal porridge they can make that sort of thing. Um, they can make salads. So you would boil them like you would boil rice, right? Um, and then you use it to make the salad like a tabula kind of salad. So let me, but before I go into recipe, let's just clarify with you now. Let's just go back up with the grain. This now, I'm back here. So now we see some of the grain. Rice is a grain as well, by the way. Rice is also a grain. So here you go, parts of the grain. This gray part, hope you're seeing this nicely. Let me make this big. So this gray part in the middle here where my cursor is, this is the germ of the, bra of the grain or the brain. It's also known as the brain as well of the grain. This is the powerhouse of the grain. This is the storehouse of the nutrients. This is where you have the life of the grain. Then you have the bran. This is the outer part of it. Oftentimes they take this off and they give it to the pigs, the cows. They get the bran. However, this is the part it is a super fibrous. It is rich in B vitamins and it is full of trace minerals, All right? So it's actually quite nutritious part, but that the grain normally gets stripped of that. So when you have a grain like your white flour, this is what you have or any grain when it is refined, this is what you have, you lose the bran and you lose the germ and you're left only with the endosperm which is this lighter color section here it's a lot of it but that is all you're left with and all you get from that is it's a lot of carbohydrate and it's a lot of protein so it provides your energy so when you get a grain that is not the whole grain you're not getting the b vitamins you're not getting the fiber, you're not getting the antioxidants, you're not getting the vitamin E's, you're not getting the healthy fats, your omegas, you're not getting that if it is not the whole grain. All right. So when we say if you are 
like children who should get like their three to five so three serving of whole grain it's not the white flour it's not the white bread it's not the croissant that you see on the shop shelf it's not the bagels that you see on the shop shelf that <laughs> can give to the pig take back the bran from the pig and give the pig the endosperm <laughs> 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 I have mosquitoes eating my foot here off. Um, <laughs> and I was trying to enter the room. Right? So this is what a whole grain is. So when we're talking about grains, when you're talking about grains and you want to see what is what you need to eat, just understand that any grain. This is the whole grain. So when you get in the rice that is already bleached, it means you're only getting the carbohydrate and the protein. You're not getting, you're not getting no fiber from it. That is why when you eat white flour and white rice and stuff like that, it binds you up. When I say bind, I mean constipation. It causes constipation because there's no fiber in it. The fiber, the pig gets the fiber. The cows, the horses, they get the fiber. So you're eating, you're getting just protein and just carbohydrate. And then to that now you add fat, right? So really, your belly is full, but you are starving because you have not gotten an ounce of antioxidant, not any healthy fats. You haven't gotten any fibers. You haven't gotten any of the B vitamins or any of the trace minerals. So the grain on its own has basically everything that you need for survival, you know, in terms of energy. And that is why you can see the importance of this scripture. One of these scriptures here, I can't remember which one of them. When um, I think Ezekiel, the Lord tell him he's going to lie down on his side for one year. And the only thing he's going to eat for that year was grains. And that was going to keep him while he was lying on his side. I believe it was Ezekiel or, you know, one of them prophets that just, just, just leave your mouth open. Yes, Ezekiel. Right. It's because he's getting every single thing from it, right? From a whole grain. Because so, he's getting his oxyantidants as well, which we mostly get from our fruits and our vegetables. He's getting his vitamin E, which we mostly get from... um. We mostly get this from our, our nuts and seeds and oils. He's getting all his B vitamins, right? He's supposed to get all his B vitamins, which we normally get from our grains. I mean, there are other things with B vitamins, but we are getting a lot of it from our grains. Uh, but that would be our whole grains. He's getting his healthy fats as well. So he's getting everything that he needs or a whole year worth of nutrition right one whole year worth of nutrition from grains lying on his side that will supply him with energy for a year and that's to show that he can live a whole year without b12 because he's get, he's producing it every night he goes to sleep he produces his own b12 in his gut and his mouth but obviously we 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 are feeble and broken all our systems are broken down we have destroyed our health so if you need to supplement, then you may need to supplement. But what it is showing, the scripture is showing that he's getting everything from this. This is full pack nutrition right here. So that's what you get from a grain. Um, then now, the ancient grains. So these ones right here, over to, in the picture, we're going to come to them in a moment. And I will tell you what type of grains these are over here. So you have your, I think, over this side, it's meant to be your gluten-free, but it's have everything mixed up in it. Some, some are not necessarily gluten-free, but um, it's just a list of ancient grain. And rice is also an ancient grain. So this here, over here, is types of wheat flour. Wheat flour. So you have the inkhorn. An ancient variety of wheat. Then you have the kamut, our korashan, kamut korashan. 
It's another ancient form of weed. You have spelt also from an older version of wheat. And you have couscous, a coarse, pre-soaked flour made from durum wheat. All right. Let me stop and see. Hold on one second. Let's see what else on this that I want to share. How do I get this back off? I want to get it off big. Okay, I just go through. This is the whole grain stuff. Okay, whole meal. So the confusing terminologies. Whole meal. So if you see a bread that says whole meal or anything that says whole meal, it is referring to flour. Right? And it means all the grains are intact. Right? Now, brown usually contains about 85% of the original grain. So when you see something labeled brown bread, it means it contains about 85% of the original grain. So it means, let's see now, the original grain, we know that it should have the endosperm, we know it should have the bran, and we know it should have the, what's the other section? There's three sections of the grains I just show you. Endosperm. Okay, so we have the endosperm. Name any other of the section of a grain? The germ. The bran. The bran. Sorry, say that again. I didn't hear. The germ and the bran. Yeah, so the germ is the. All right, let's go back to the grain. So everybody take one last look at the grain. This question may very well come in the exam to name the three sections of the grain. All right, so the bran, which is the outer shell, the germ, which is the nutrient powerhouse, and the endosperm, which provides your energy, your carbohydrate and your protein. When you buy white flour, what are you getting? Nothing. The endosperm. The endosperm. The endosperm. Right. Now, back to which slide? Right. So, brown, if it contains 85%, maybe it is missing the endosperm. I mean, not the endosperm. Maybe it is missing the germ are the bran white is 75 percent white is missing the bran the bran as well as the germ the wheat wheat germ either white or brown with about 10 percent of added germ wheat germ all right so when you see a bread or anything that's labeled a wheat germ. That what that is what it is. It's either a white. It can either be a white or a brown. Let's say bread. It can be either a white bread or a brown bread. Which which so if it is a white bread, then you know it is only seventy five percent of the grain that is in it, and then they've added back about ten percent of the germ. Remember the germ has. Uh, you tell me, what does a germ has? Give me four things that's in the germ. Antioxidant. Another Nutrition. one. Nutrition. Vitamin, Vitamin e. B. Vitamin B. And E. E and omegas. Right. Your omegas are in the germ. So if you see wheat germ bread, you know that it already has maybe only 75% of the whole grain, only 75% of it, right? And then they've added back 10% of the germ. So 
That's what it means by wheat germ. If you see malted wheat grain, this is brown or whole meal flour with added malted grains. So malted wheat grain means you may have some whole meal, which, okay, so it may have the whole grain in it, or it may have brown, which usually is about 85%, which means it may be missing the bran, or it could be missing the, the germ. I don't know which one it is missing. So it's that plus malted grains. Now, stone ground, this is good stuff. It is usually the entire grain, the whole grain. All right. So when you see like your stone ground oats or any grain that says stone ground, it's usually the, the full thing. So the whole meal here is referring to all the ingredients also in top. Now, let's see if we need to, what else? So remember, how do you identify whole grains in the shop? You check the ingredients label. If the first ingredient says whole before the grain, example, whole wheat, it is likely to be the whole grain. Look for the stamp that says 100%. It means, it means, right? So if the stamp on the bread says 100%, it means it has at least 16 grams of whole grain. So what's your best bet now in terms of your bread? It's just buy your whole grain flour and make your bread yourself. All right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I, I am hoping you're a little bit clearer. Let's see if there are some other grains listed on this. Let me just go down. Um... So there you go, 100% whole grain. When it, see, it's, it's labeling it, the 23 grams or more. Then you have whole grain, 32 grams or more per serving. So, all right. Okay, let's get cooking with whole grain. Who wanted some recipes? Take some pictures. Veggie flax crackers. And by the way, Myrtle teaches, you can use some of these grains in the dehydrator, like how Myrtle showed you to do the onion crackers. You can do them in the dehydrate as well. These recipe calls for the um, the oven, but you can also do them in the dehydrator. Brown rice crackers. Easy vegan recipe. And they're gluten-free. Whole grain. Flat bread. So, did we do... um? We did flatbreads. Did we do the pancake? I don't remember. No. No. Maybe next okay. next course. You know, you, we can only cover so much in one class. Um, we try to give as much as we can, but the course, uh, the classes still go over like four hours. We try to fit in as much as we can. And that's why every course, it varies so much because we, we try to just, just give it. Just give as much as we can give. But time is a restraint. All right, so you have whole grain flat bread as well. There you go. And you can use sprouted wheat flour. Um, you can use any sprouted grain as well. In fact, you could even use the lentils to make that. Um, let's select these people in. Sweet potato flat bread. Amaranth. Okay, so I was asking about amaranth, I think. Let's see if we have an amaranth recipe here. Here we go, amaranth pancakes. Girl, you better take this recipe. And you're going to use your chia, not your chia seeds. You're going to use your, your egg replacement for your egg. You're going to use your plant-based milk for your milk. You can use your vegan homemade butter for your butter. Can you, somebody post the recipes, please? Huh? Can somebody post the recipes? Um, I will. I I'm screenshotting them. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right. I will. I'm screenshotting. Here you go, part two. 
So anybody make the amaranth pancake, please send some to me because my amaranth there in my cupboard soon start growing. <laughs> By the way, you can sprout the amaranth. Oh. Mm -hmm. You have a screenshot? I can move on. All right, quinoa. Yeah. This is how a quinoa grain, I find it's so beautiful once it is cooked. It's so um, presentable. You know, um, the grain swells up a bit and then you have this little thing look like a little root sticking out. It's not a root, but you see that little finer piece there? It just sticks out. I love the, the, the quinoa when it is cooked. I love the look of it. The presentation is just wow. And when it's done properly and you still have it nice and light and fluffy, it just makes it really good. It's high in protein and one of the few plant food that contains sufficient amount of all nine essential amino acids. Yeah, it's also high in fiber, magnesium, and vitamin B, iron, and potassium, calcium, phosphorus, vitamin E, and various beneficial antioxidants. So you see, when the, um, Ezekiel or whoever it was was going to lie on his side for one whole year, he's got good food. All he needs is a spoon of quinoa. <laughs> see there you go you can use your quinoa in your vegetable soups you see this so it makes an amazing soup with your lovely green vegetables your celery and all of this oh courgette your tomatoes your peppers really nice part two of the soup yeah sorghum another another um another grain very um nutrient dense as well rich in your vitamins and your minerals your bees your trace elements your antioxidants your proteins excellent source of fiber see somebody on their menu is gonna do a moroccan salad isn't it i don't i don't the press may not be here but look at some of these edible flowers in this dish. Can you see this, this salad on the side there? Nasturgeon. Hmm? Nasturgeon, isn't it? I don't even know what they're called, sister. I, I just know edible flowers. Nasturgeon. Davina, was there a part two to, um, was it amaranth? I can't remember what it was. Was it amaranth? Thank you. Yeah, Back man. Yes, Back I did. My... Oh, no, this one, this one, this one. This? Yes, thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. So this Moroccan sorghum, I'm so sorry. I'm so far from you people who are making all these delicious food. <laughs> Someone told you to go to Jamaica. Ah! My name, my name ah! Ah! Has got flowers, rabbit in beige and beauty, rabbit in. <laughs> <laughs> there is a part two of the salad. Good. That looks nice. Mm -hmm okay i mean i don't know if you may have gotten this class word that which nobody probably did <laughs> but but you all did it in class anyway you made your ancient grain meatballs um you made your ancient grain salad your 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 you made what with couscous or something else i don't know if anybody made the soup with ancient grain but you still have your exams that somebody could throw that in Okay, and that's it. I am hoping everyone is a little bit clearer now on the grains. Are we? Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes. All right, that's good. Now back yes, thank to the, you. Back to the exam revision. <laughs> and I'm glad for those who are in class. It's it's always like an added bonus just to be in class. Let's see. All right, so what is lecithin used for? Pickling. Emulsifier. It's an emulsifier. Yes, so look, have we all seen um, Enoch chocolate? Yes. Man, yes. Enoch has taken this thing to another level. So you know that little boy has set the standards for, for everyone here. <laughs> I, oh, Nadia, you have your hand raised? I need yes. to see you all chocolates coming through now that you all have lecithin there and you all butter in your fridge already. Yes, question, because my daughter have done the, uh, she's a carob fanatic, so she did <laughs> all kind of carob stuff, but 
it melts after it comes out the fridge. That's the chocolate lecithin. too. We, <laughs> we never did it with the lecithin though. Does the lecithin hold it a little longer? Um, yeah. it does. No, oh. you put it. You put it in the freezer and then you cut it up when it hardens, then it stays in the fridge when you want to use it. So it has to be cool. So that's the dog because we she did a beautiful she did a beautiful variation. But like she's she's something else. Uh but so we, what we, I we would do Okay, yeah. Because we try a tiny market. try it. The farmers market and that's where she wanna sell that. That's her little Okay, so the temperature market. gonna change. Try do some experimentation with some agar agar in it as well all right okay, so for example okay. my cake that i did my cake stands up with the agar agar but i use a tablespoon of agar agar to you know and my tablespoon is large <laughs> <laughs> my right, tablespoon so is a jamaican size tablespoon yeah davina how would you make the carob chips so they hold in the oven because they're used in um cookies and things but the ones we're making melt how would i make the carob chocolate chip yeah so they don't melt in the oven mm, that would have to have some sort of cornstarch in it to help to hold it keep it still but I'm not sure what's gonna keep it not keep it from melting in the oven because your cheese it's that is high temperature. Anything that is at that anything like that that doesn't melt in the oven, you probably shouldn't mm, I don't know what it is, must be cement. Uh, <laughs> um Davina, chocolate, chocolate will melt when you chocolate chips will melt when you put them in the oven. I think one of the secrets... They actually do. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Is to put it in... Coat, coat it in the flour. Before you put it in and make sure that it's the last thing that you add before you put it in the oven. You got that? I don't know who asked because I can't see the faces or that. I'm just seeing my screen. So did you get the, the question answered? Yes, thank you. All right. you have Yeah, experiment with it with coating it in the flour. And... um. Cause I'm just I'm just thinking when you bake flour, of course it's gonna harden, so it will probably take it a bit longer so to melt. And um, and if it's only for cupcakes, they only need about 15, 12 to fifteen minutes in the oven anyway. Any longer than that, it will definitely melt. All right, you getting some tips there? And I'll charge for my internet phones. <laughs> All right. Careful now. Choose the gluten free grains amaranth, quinoa, buckwheat, or couscous, quinoa, amaranth, rice, pasta, potato. Potato is not a grain, by the way. I mean, it's just here to throw you off, but I don't want to. I don't want you to be that thrown off. Whole wheat flour, cornmeal, millet. Which one is the gluten free list of grains? B. 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 Excellent. So now I get in one like a choir now. Brilliant. Before I get something like um, a acapella group where everybody's singing something different. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What is aquafaba? Is it rice water? Chickpea water. Water from any bean. C. Any bean. C. 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 All right. Water from any bean that has been boiled. Yeah. Ah, yes. C. Yes. Yes. But the chickpea is the most stable. But I, I just put that question there and those two answers because I want you to remember if you don't have chickpea, any beans that you have will 90% yes. likely work. All right? Just a chickpea is the most stable one. And if you boil your beans and the water is a bit long and it's not forming, what do you think you need to do? Add some arrowroot. No, not to add some arrowroot, but just to boil it down a bit more to okay. evaporate some of the liquid. So the thicker the water, the more viscous the water, 
the easier it will be to whip on for you to get the desired results. Excuse me, um, how long can you keep that water? Could you freeze it or you have to throw it out after? No, you can freeze the water, I believe. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you can freeze it. You can also put it in cubes. So you... That's okay. In an ice tray. The ice oh. tray, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, the most... We, we, we're going to look in a vegan pantry now, right? I don't even want you to look at question number seven. I'm going to pull up a different, I'm going to stop this one and I'm going to pull up a different thing. I just want you to have an, an understanding of um, vegan pantry. Where is it? That's food combination. Let me... Uh, okay, hold on, bear, bear with me. I'm gonna share the vegan nutrition stuff in a second. Where is the vegan nutrition thing that I'm searching for? Are you seeing the vegan nutrition course outline on your screen? No, we can see your files. No. Yes. Okay, all right, let me do that again. Um, I get this thing to, to, to be just, okay, let me close this on the side. Okay, you're seeing just the screen now. So we're gonna look at and with every vegan, every vegan, you need to have a, your pantry, right? This is where you store your ingredients that you use. They're not easily spoiled, right? So 99% of the time they can be kept at room temperature. And if they're open, they don't go off overnight. So you can use them over and over. Your essential list of ingredients, right? For your pantry. So here we go. On the right, the two right-hand columns. Or the middle column. We're looking in the middle column. So we're looking at your agar, agar. That has a shelf life of I don't know how long. Forever and a day. All right? So that's your seaweed. But it is used as your gelatin. In your vegan cooking, you may find it very useful to use it in just about anything. If you want to make vegan meat like bologna that you're going to slice up as your sandwich meat, you will find the agar agar come in handy. So when you have like, a, you make your soya milk and you have some okara left over, you throw this okara in your blender with some agar agars some plant-based milk or water or some sauce. Maybe you even have some sauce left over from something else. You throw that in with it. And you once once you blend that up together and you realize it tastes good, you throw some agar agar in it, throw it back on the fire, um, cook it down until it becomes nice and thick, but you have to start. You could put even some psyllium husk in it, by the way, as well. And then you pour this or you roll it. You can pour it in a loaf tin or you roll it in um, in your greaseproof paper or whatever. Shape it, right? And you can bake this or you can then throw this in the freezer, right? And you can slice this and use it as vegan meat. This is all your agar agar will, you know, don't wait for, don't wait to find a recipe that asks you for agar agar before you go out and buy it. Buy that and keep it in your pantry. When you're buying it, as long as you find a good one, 
if you if you were just gonna make a recipe, let's say you were gonna make a recipe that asks for a tablespoon or two tablespoons, and when you go to the shop, the smallest amount you can buy is like ten gram, but you you even see it in um, a fifty gram or a hundred gram or a two hundred and fifty gram size. Don't be afraid, as long as you have the cash at hand, don't be afraid to buy the 250 grams. Because even though for this recipe you're only going to use a tablespoon, you want to have that agar agar at hand. Because it is one of them things that come in really handy. So let's say today you boil a lot of beans, you make stew peas because you were expecting friends over, but at the end of the day only you alone end up eating the stew peas. Maybe you cook too much food as well, you know, whatever the case is. You have a lot of stupids left over. Tomorrow you're thinking, two days come and you say, you know what? I don't even feel for the stupids anymore. I want to eat something different, but I need to do something with the stupids. Okay. Please mute yourself. Mute yourself. Can, can somebody mute that person for me, please? I don't even see who's talking. All right. So let's say no. You 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 want something different, oh, man. Father. <laughs> okay. Should I just mute everyone and then I will unmute myself? Okay, so I am not muted. I'm fine. All right, so I will use this option. I'll just mute everybody. Now, you find yourself now with this two peas that you don't want to throw it out because it is still a lot of beans. And it actually tastes good, but just that you don't really feel for any more beans today. You want something else. You don't want any more stew peas. You want something else. What are you going to do with these beans? Literally throw them beans in your blender. Throw them in your blender. You can throw some psyllium husk. You don't even need to have the psyllium husk. Throw some cornstarch in with them. Throw some agar agar in. Throw some other grain in. Cook it down after that again to activate the agar agar. So it needs heat to activate it, right? And once you see that, you can throw this in a mold, in any mold to shape it, or you can bind it up. If you have enough starch in it, you can bind it where you can form it with your hand. And if you leave the mixture to cool, you will see even in the pot, it will firm up a bit more and you can um, shape it with your hand. Form it into meatballs, form it into sausages, form it into burgers. Put them in a plastic bag, use a Ziploc of bags and portion them out. Throw them in the freezer. I'm going to encourage everybody, buy a small deep freeze. Buy a small deep freeze. When you have the leftover stuff, turn them into from A into B. Throw them in the deep freeze even if you're not ready for them. Right? Agave or honey or some sort of sweetener is also an essential ingredient. Why we don't want to use sugar is because the process that it goes through that make that white crystallized stuff, um, you know, it can actually become poison and toxic to the body, especially the fact that we use so much of it. And when you get to our age as well, every little thing you eat um, causes problems. Everything you eat that is not right, it causes problems. So it's not like the little children who when you are much younger and you probably eat a sugar candy and you go outside, you play all day. You're good. No, no. You eat the sugar. You find you have arthritis here. You have this starting happening, that start happening. So I have an essential ingredient like a bottle of honey or a bottle of agave or a bottle of maple syrup. In terms of flavor, they all have three different flavors right but they're all sweetener and but and and not only that but they're all very nice linseed or flaxseed always have that why because you can use it as an egg replacer so it is not the perfect egg replacer but it can be used as an egg replacer your sunflower seed and your pumpkin seed these things they make they in themselves, you can cook them in a dish like we did a pumpkin lettuce sauce. You can cook them alone just with the tomato sauce. You can cook them alone in your cream sauce. By the way, you can cook them with potatoes like you have done with the pumpkin. You can do them with potatoes in the very same way. You can put your milk in it. You can cook them down with your, with your milk as well, your plant-based milk. Or 
I have another pumpkin lecture that I make, but I use this sweetened, the, 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 I use a coconut condensed milk, or maybe it is soy condensed milk. I don't know what, but some condensed milk. Absolutely amazing with the seeds. So you want to always have your seeds at hand. And to start a proper vegan lifestyle, when you just start, you're going to spend money on these things, but they last you for a much longer time than you. If you buy one pack of seeds, let's say 500 grams of sunflower seeds and uh, pumpkin seeds, let's say you get them for five pounds, which would be really cheap, by the way. You get them for a pack for two packs for five pounds. How much of it are you going to eat in one day? A quarter cup. And if you're really greedy, you may end up going to a half cup. Or if you use it in something like a loaf or so, you may use a half cup or you may use a cup. But how many cups do you get out of that pack? You get loads of cups out of that um, pack of 500 grams of sunflower seed and 500 grams of um, pumpkin seed. And you can you get loads of cups out of it. And you're, ideally for nutritional purposes, you need a handful or let's say a quarter cup of that per day for to maintain good health. That's all you really need per day. So it's going to last you a much longer time. If you were to spend that five pounds, I don't know how much meat you could buy with that, but I'm sure five pounds of meat ain't going to last that long. That's one meal. If it make, if it reaches one meal, all right? So your sunflower seed, your black seeds, so basically sunflower and pumpkin, sunflower, pumpkin, and linseeds are the most crucial seeds and your sesame seeds that you want to have in your cupboard, right? Those are your most crucial seeds for your cupboard. I mentioned honey already. Why I cannot get my thing to move? Okay. Why do you want your nuts? Your nuts is something else. So any nuts, cashew, your almond. Almond is known as like the king of nuts. Things like your Brazil nuts, have that. Even if you don't use it often and you only buy a small pack, you keep it because if you eat one, if you have thyroid disorder, you have problems with sleeping, not sleeping well, you take one Brazil nut. I mean, the serving is about three Brazil nuts per day. And when you have sickness that you need to improve, you may take up to five Brazil nuts per day. It provides everything that you would have getting from the Brazil nut plus other nuts. So that, that Brazil nut is that big nut that looks like a jackfruit seed. All right. Um, so have your nuts. You can have a little pack of Brazil nut. Things like cashew and almond nut is used a lot. Your peanut as well. Have those. When you go to the shop, don't buy the one that is salted or honey roasted or anything like that. Buy the raw stuff and you can do it yourself. Honey roasted or salted. That's something else. At a cooking club, you will learn how to do some of these. I'll teach some of them at the cooking club. Um... As I say, have your nuts. Your nuts, you can throw them in your oven and just toast them like you would do your seeds. Throw them then afterwards in your blender and ground them up. You can do a rough chop and then throw them now in a jar, mason jar, and keep them as crushed nuts, right? Crushed nuts and seeds. Or you can bring them to a powder, right? And this you can use when they're toasted like that. It starts releasing the oils from them and the taste is out of this world. When you're making things like your loaf, your meat dishes, and you use this to season it or you sprinkle it on the top, it makes a fantastic presentation, gives a nice texture and the flavor that it adds to your food. It's like, wow, what have I been missing all this time? Have stuff like your smoked paprika. And you know, you can always have your liquid smoke, but things like your liquid smoke is a little bit more on the expensive side. So you can have your liquid smoke, but you don't use your liquid smoke for everything. You keep it for your nice special dishes, right? But your smoked paprika, especially when you're going to buy smoked paprika, look for the Spanish smoked paprika. To me, the taste of that and the flavor, the smell is just wow. Completely different from any normal smoked paprika. So that's a good ingredient to have in your cupboard, right? As a vegan. Things like your cumin, a lot of cuisines, a lot of culture uses cumin in their cuisine. You can buy the ground cumin or you can just buy the dried cumin. And um, 
cumin and ground it whenever you're ready to use it. But the ground cumin, I just buy the ground cumin. <laughs> your cardamom as well makes a good flavor, um, good ingredients. Your turmeric, definitely you want to have. And by the way, some of these very same spices now that I'm going to mention, you have COVID, you can use them in teas and stuff like that or to prevent it. You can use them for preventative measures and helping as well in terms of the reversal and optimizing the immune system, boosting the immune system and um, helping to keep respiratory disorders at bay. Your bay leaf, crucial ingredients. Even if you, you're not somebody who grew up on bay leaf, you don't know a lot of recipes that you can use it for, just have a little packet of bay leaf in your cupboard, trust me. When you find out the amount of things you can use bay leaf for, you will be using it all the time. But what I always advise is try to understand your herbs and your spices and just have them and keep them separate. Don't go doing one pot and you mix in a healthy herb in your cupboard in one pot. No. Keep it simple. You're going to do one dish. You probably use about four, five herb the most. You know, just keep it simple and keep, if you're doing Indian cuisine, keep the Indian herbs. Use them when you're going to do the, 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 the Greek, the Indian cuisine. And use them in the proportion, the kind of way how Indians would normally use them. If you're going to do Caribbean, do it the Caribbean way. If you're going to do it the British way, do it just the British way. So you can have different flavors in your recipes as you go along and everything doesn't always taste the same way. Right? Pimento or allspice, that is something you should have. That is international. Every country uses allspice, right? Cloves is another good one. Your star anise is another good one. Your olive oil, very much an essential ingredient, right? It is used for med great in medicinal, for medicinal purposes. Your dry soya beans is also a good one to have. In fact, any dried beans is good to have your temp i mean tempeh is not necessarily essential because i don't even teach that one anymore but it is um nutritionist including even dr craig uh, recommend it as a good food um my my problem is i used to eat tempeh until i learned how to make it i've just been completely put off and i can't Get it past my mouth <laughs> anymore. All right. So, Davina, in, yeah. Sorry, can I ask about the dried soya? Yeah. When you're cooking it, um, do you just follow the instructions on the packet, or do you always boil it? I uh, always see. I always soak it first. You, yeah, soak it, but then do you boil it? Yeah, I boil it. Okay, because of the, for instance, I've seen some some say soak it in cold water. Some say soak it in hot hot water. Some say boil it. So I just wonder no, if it. No, I always soak beans in cold water. You put hot water, you're starting the cooking process. Right. Okay. Um, and to soak it, you want to release the gases um, that causes the that has the sugars that um, cause the gut problem. Is that the phytate? Yes, the fight is right. Phytic acids, yeah. So I always soak beans overnight in cold water. Mind you, you have cooking emergencies at times. So you have a cooking emergency and there's nothing more you can use for that dish or you maybe don't have no other beans in your house. Then you just do what you have to do when you have to do it. But ideally, soak overnight. I'm talking about the dried, so the, 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 um, you know, the soya, the, um, the veggie meat, the soya chunks. No, my Sorry, that's what I'm talking, that's yeah. what I'm talking about, the soya chunk. Oh, okay, you're talking about the dried, the textured vegetable protein. I, yeah, sorry. Dry, I boil them. Um, some people say soak overnight. Yes, you can soak overnight. I don't soak them overnight. I boil them before I need them. I, and I drain them off and I also rinse them off. Because I don't like that foul kubi smell <laughs> or foul feeding smell that they have or taste. Even though I do know some people, they actually like that flavor that it comes with when it's dry and you smells a bit like foul feeding. 
it's the asset that I go for and that's my reason for boiling it and I just boil it when I need it because you can boil it some people soak it overnight to retain nutrients I also not do I not not just do I boil it I also rinse it off afterwards but there's probably added nutrients to it so you would have lost some by rinsing okay and then I season it up and I leave it overnight and by the way soya beans I do um, okay Magali quickly Magali yes, Davina, I just wanted to know the use of the black strap molasses so how do we use it because I bought me a bottle and I've never touched it okay so black strap molasses is very good for the nervous system right um, you are not sleeping well at nights you can take a um, a tablespoon of blackstrap molasses you can just warm a quarter cup of um, plant-based milk and put that blackstrap molasses in it it funny enough it it actually builds the rebuilds the blood but it makes you it, 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 it relaxes you and help you to fall asleep it also builds the iron levels in the body how else do you use it other than in a nice tea I use my um, molasses in my breakfasts. I use it in my desserts. I use it as well. So I don't use vinegar of any kind. And I don't use soy sauce either. Mm -hmm. I will use um, tamari if I have, but if I don't, this is what I get my black strap molasses and I add some lemon juice to it and I add. Um, oil and you can add water and I blend that well together and I can use that um, as a dipping sauce so I can season that up with some savory herbs and stuff like my thyme, my um, mixed herbs and stuff like that and I can use it as a nice dipping sauce to go with something like even my pita bread right um, so you know you have the bread and olive oil you go to restaurants sometimes you get the bread and olive oil bread with olive oil dip balsamic 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 I'm looking for that's the word I'm looking for your balsamic right so I use it in those ways and definitely I will put it with my oats or my amaranth or anything that I want to make a dessert or a porridge something like that so your fresh ingredient you can always get at the shop you want to have even though you can make your own plant-based milk have at least one box of soya milk tucked away somewhere in a corner so for any emergency right where you have not got the time to make your own plant-based milk you can, or you want to make some yogurt you haven't got the time to make the plant-based milk or cream you grab for your store-bought one your dried beans and while I don't purport canned foods because it's processed, have a few canned beans in your pantry for emergency, not just the dried one because you know you have an emergency, dry beans going to take forever and a day to cook. So for your course, what have you found from this list to be some of the most essential, important things that you have to have? Agar, Agar, Agar. What else? Chilliam husk. Chilliam husk, okay. What else? Huh? I find that I need a knife and a cutting board for this course. <laughs> oh, yeah. I also find that I need yeah. a food processor or a blender. A yeah. blender, yeah. Yeah. A strainer. A what? A strainer? A strainer as well, yes, is also very important for this course. All right, so just some those essential ingredients that you want to make sure you have. You want to have some herb or something to season your food. Spoons. spoons definitely so wooden, wooden ones wooden ones yes yes 
I find that a dehydrator is also needed for this course. All right, so there we go. Um, go back to the quiz. Let me share again. Quiz. All right, so for this question, choose the most essential, essential list of ingredients for a vegan pantry. Aquafaba, good cutting board and a good knife pot and blender remember it says ah okay essential list of ingredients essential list is different from essential list of ingredients mm -hmm. all right so i don't know which one of these wording may be on your test but just remember essential list takes in the equipment as well but ingredients is talking about the food aspect of things. So, good cutting board, good knife, ancient grains, nuts and beans. Any answer? Are you hearing me? Am I still there? Sorry, what was the question again, please, um, Davina? B. Choose the most essential list for a big vegan pantry. Beans, seeds, nuts, grains, dried fruits and vegetables. That's C. D. Beans, nuts, seeds, dried fruits and preserved vegetables. B. I would say C. B. B. C, vegetable mm -hmm. stuff. B. 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 B as in beans. B. 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 Yes, B. This one. Oops. B. Sorry. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> B. B. Yes, B. that one? Yes. 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 Okay. All right, a good cutting board, a good knife, your ancient grains, your nuts, and your beans. Simply put. All right, choose the most appropriate legume list. What are legumes, firstly? Beans. Beans, beans. lentils. All your dry pulses. A. A. Your red kidney beans, your black beans, your lentils, and your soybeans. Okay, black bean, roast cocoa bean, red lentil, and sweet potato. Hey. 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 So, any answers? Hey. 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 Okay. Yeah. Appropriate legume list. That's correct. A sweet potato is not a legume. That's right. Neither, neither is onion and garlic. And of course, mm -hmm. these completely out. Uh, <laughs> where do vegans get their calcium? Spinach, kale. So is that from your spinach, your kale, your soy milk, and your fortified vegan products? Or is it from your kale, your soy milk, your broccoli, your tahini, your beans, and your seeds? Beef. Yes. B. 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 A. B. It's both. A ah, and B. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. Fortified vegan products. Okay. Mm -hmm. But B is more natural. B is more natural. <laughs> but any one of those answers you put um would be correct are actually yeah mm -hmm, anyone would be correct except supplement we don't want to get not no. i'm not saying no to supplementing if you need to or if it is prescribed i'm just saying we don't need we don't need to rely on supplements for our calcium <clears throat> Hold on. 
One second, I'm. It, this thing is out of control. True or false? But tell me, a hey, if vegans do not plan their diets properly, they could miss out on essential nutrients such as calcium, iron, and B12. Is that true? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. That is true. If it is not planned properly, we could miss out. Yeah. So you have to plan wisely. All right. Mm -hmm. Children nine yes. years and up, as well as athletes and construction workers or heavy duty workers, should have at least three servings of the five to six daily recommended serving of grains. True. 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 Okay. Um, yes. A high protein breakfast is healthier mm -hmm. than a high carbohydrate breakfast. No. no. False. Excellent. Adventists are the longest living people in the Western world. True or false? True. 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 Corn True. is a mushroom. False. 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 Let's see. I think that's the last question. Okay. So with that said, we're finished with reviewing. Um, now let us hear about some of the menus whose menus have not been reviewed for exam so just, just let me tell you a few things that we are looking for for the exam I want to see remember how you eat for health is your salad is not your side dish your salad is your main dish so I know we have been brought up and we have been conditioned to see the salad on the side order the salad as a main as a side dish no the salad is your main dish Order the pizza as the side dish. Order, <laughs> order the, the rest of the food as the side dish, okay? The salad is the main course. So, it's a different way of, of menu planning. We, we don't grow up like this. We are not conditioned to think this way. But your living enzymes should be the bulk of your meal. It should be your main attraction, your centerpiece. And everything else is your side dish. So, for the exam, we're looking for your salad. It will be graded on those grounds, right? Color, presentation, nutritional content, and as close to mocking the culture that it is coming from as much as possible. Then, from your salad, you now want to have your side dishes. So, you can now have your beans, you can now have your carbohydrate dish, right? So we're looking for that. We're looking for using, we don't want to see you doing stew peas every day. So we want to see you using up those beans in a way that, wow, your family or whoever is your guest is going to say, I can't believe she's used beans like this, right? Then you want to have a dessert, even though you're going to actually, <laughs> life is short, have the dessert first. <laughs> so look. Your dessert is ideally served with breakfast. That's when is the best time of the day to have your dessert. But you're going to be doing it with your main courses. So I'm looking to see a showstopper dessert. I'm looking to see something good. Use up all the skills that you've learned. And make a fantastic vegan dessert that will blow the minds of others away. That's what I'm looking for for the exam in terms of it should take you no more than three to four hours to prepare your dishes, especially if you pre-prep. We are looking for presentation. We're big on presentation because we are not there to taste the food. So if you say it tastes good, we take your word for it. If you say it tastes bad, well, we do take your word for it, but you may be graded down. <laughs> so I would suggest you get good reports. It's your dish. And remember, with vegan meats, they have the flavor that you give them. So if it tastes bland, well, you know where the flavor came from. If it's too salt, again, you know where the flavor came from. If it's too sweet, can only blame yourself. So balance it. Whatever flavor you give it, that's the flavor it will go by. Now let me hear from you. Who has not submitted their recipe as yet? Or, or no, no, no. That's not a question. Who have not received the feedback on their menu as yet and are able to share their screen now? So I will make screen 
shareable by all participants. Okay. Oh, so you can share. Let's see, how do I do that again? Sorry, while you're looking, Davina, I've submitted my recipes, but I don't know whether or not it's been received. No, so, so if, I, if I have not given a feedback as yet, it's, it's that I have not seen it as yet. It may have been received, but it's a lot, so I'm going through them. And for those who are sending in their recipes for their the compilation of their recipes, don't send them in one one. That's fine, but you need to put all of them on one document. And I know sometimes it's heavy to send the documents, all the pictures, but if you have to split the document in two, then that's fine. But your recipes should be on one document so you can have that for yourself. And you send through one thing because then um, I think it's filled up with loads of recipes from the same person and exams there as well for me to look at. So if you did not submit your assignment as yet, quickly show me. Or if you have any questions, if you need any support, this is the time. Okay. Okay, can I go next? Go, Florence, please. All right, thank you. Did you want me to share my screen or I should just... You can, you quick? can. I've made it, I've enabled you could share Are your you? screen. Your oh. screen, screen. Oh, it won't work on this tablet, sorry. I'm on my laptop at the same time. Okay, okay so talk. let me talk I, you through it. Talk me through, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've tried to design um, breakfast, a meal for a pregnant woman. Mm-hmm. Um, we're starting off with breakfast. We're going to have a... Plant. That's your meal planning stuff or that's your exam? This is for my exam tomorrow. Okay. All right. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. If it's too much, let me know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so for breakfast, um, I was going to give her a plant-based yogurt. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was going to splash over as in have almonds, nuts, pumpkin seeds and oats. Uh, just as the base, and then the yogurt will be poured on top. So that's for breakfast. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. That sounds then, nice. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had to do some research around it. Um, <laughs> then for the snack, because a healthy snack for a pregnant mother, you know, they get hungry quite quickly, it would be pita bread with olives and hummus. So I'll be making okay. the hummus. All right. But now, even... Mm. Okay. Well... Snack. I don't know what we call snack. <laughs> I have a, a <laughs> I have issues with that term, right? Okay, okay. Call it lunch. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to okay. give the pregnant mother three or four meals for the day, yeah. then you work out a meal plan according to that. But there should be no eating between the meal times. Okay. All right. So this should yeah. be a light lunch. All right. Call it lunch. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and then so that's the lunch, and then the um, if she's really hungry, you know how they sometimes get hungry, then is she all right to have a fruit, like an apple, one apple? So what happened now is if you're going to do a meal plan for a pregnant woman yeah. um, and she's one of them who is suffering from hunger very often, hmm. give her four meals for the day. Okay. Plan it with four meals for the day. Right. Uh -huh. So whenever it is, you would want her to have the apple with her breakfast or maybe it's going to be the last meal. Then you put the apple there. OK, but she shouldn't be walking around. And because the apple is looking at her, she suddenly feels hungry and take it up and eat it. Because <laughs> uh -huh. then she's going to have a sour disposition, which most pregnant women do, by the way, because they constantly mm -hmm. eat around the clock like little cows. And then she's going to be eating around the clock again, like little cows, and she probably developed gestational diabetes because it's too much food. And she would have a sour stomach, and so will the child. So even for her, health principles apply. But I do understand she's using up more than others. So that's why I would say three. And if... I don't know how much hours she's awake, but you need to give her a stomach at least, let's say, four hours break between meals. Okay. Oh. And note, for everyone else, it's five to six hours break between meals. But I'm saying just for a pregnant woman, at least four hours. Half the time, it's just being indisciplined Why we feel like we are always hungry because we see the food. Mm. Even for a pregnant woman, it is. Mm -hmm. So Everybody have, have, three, have three meals Okay. Um, at times where you can you can have at least four 
four and a half, let's say five hours break between the meal. And then yes, she's hungry. If she's hungry at the four hours and she's had four solid hours break between meal where she's been having water, then yes, she, she, her stomach, her body is actually ready. That means the digestion process is complete, has been complete. That's if she had those four, four hours break, solid break between meals. And at four hours, four and a half hours, she is hungry. Yes, she, she can have that next meal. But then the timings must be planned and it's today, it's at 8 o'clock for one meal and then by 12 o'clock the next meal, then let it so be. But mm -hmm. discipline, follow the regularity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's Not, good. okay, I've just had yeah. breakfast in an hour and I feel peckish again, so let me go and have a bowl of cashew nuts. Oh, I'm eating for two. No. <laughs> You're eating for diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I should be showing my face. I do apologize. I'm just off the That's fine. That's fine. I'm not yeah. showing my face today. Oh, you know? Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And so um so for the last part, uh she's going to have her dinner and her dinner was going to be enchiladas um mm -hmm. using uh corn mint with the tabbouleh salad. And listening to your conversation now, the salad should be the main meal and the um, enchiladas would be the side dish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. So I'm not going to overfeed her because I was going to do um, an unbaked carrot cake, but that's my challenge for the night. <laughs> <laughs> but so what happened now? She can have her enchilada with her salad, okay. right? So yeah. she, you can give her her carrot cake for with her breakfast, okay. right? And this is um. So for a typical meal plan for a pregnant woman, she want to start her breakfast with her fruits. And she also want to then, um, they, you have your fruits, your nice bowl of fruits or your fruit salad or something like that, or your fruit cake, but you want to have your fruits. Then you can make now your, um, what you call it. You can now make your nice cheesecake with your nuts and, uh, Probably your beans, like your cashew, not your cashew, cashew, not a bean, what you call it, the chickpeas. Your chickpeas, chickpeas or okay. tofu um, cheesecake. You want to make a cheesecake, right? And obviously the base okay. of the cheesecake, you're having um, your nuts in the base of the cheesecake. And you can also have some seeds, right? So there you go. You're getting in your nuts. You're getting in your legumes. You're getting in your seeds. And you're getting in your fruits. In fact, the cheesecake could have so much fruits on the top. It could be another mm. cake cake preparation on the top, right? <laughs> that it could be just that one. And make sure you're you're filled up on mm. your 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 thing. And a breakfast like that would really hold you. Or just have okay. the bowl of fruits first, and then enjoy your yeah. cheesecake indulgence, <laughs> right? Really but for your exam, I do need to see the cheesecake. Even you, if it you. means she's gonna eat it the next day, all right? <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Cool. So all yeah. good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. So what you want to do when you're planning your menus, you want to make sure you're getting the omegas in, right? Which you're gonna get from your beans and your seeds and your avocados, right? You want to get those in. You want to get your not beans. Your omegas not from your beans, but sorry, your seeds. Your seeds and things like your avocado, you're getting your omegas from. You want to you wanna make sure you're getting your um, beans in, right? So it's one to two cups serving of beans per day, right? You want to make sure you are getting your beans in when you're planning your menu. So I want to see the beans incorporated somewhere in the menu. Whatever menu you submit, it must have some beans in something. Um, you also want to make sure you're getting in your healthy grain as you can see your 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 one serving your your if for you those who are brain work or not sedentary i mean brain worker or sedentary you don't want to be stocking up on three to six serving of um grains you're gonna get fat and your brain is gonna slow down you're not gonna you, th that energy is gonna <sighs> bank on your hips it's going to bank as visceral fats around the organs. It's going to sit down and it's going to be waiting for you to go and exercise it off. All right? <laughs> Savina. Yeah. Savina, can I ask you, when you say servings uh, per day, you say five to six servings, uh, grains. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what do you mean? Is so it... the recommended daily allowance, 
right? This is what the government says and the World Health Organization and all these um, bodies say that we need um, minimum three of our five to six servings of grains per day, right? Um, and so ideally they're saying, if you're having three meals, you would have two servings of grains with your breakfast, you will have two servings with your dinner and two servings with your supper, right? So that's how they're saying you need to have six servings of grains for the day, but are at least three of the five three of the five to six servings that is recommended as your daily recommended allowance. But I'm saying to but you how how hmm. much is a sir uh, is a so servant? Like a slice of bread is one serving. A slice of bread, okay. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. A slice of bread, a third of a cup or something like that of grains is is, you know, um okay. Uh, make like a rice or so or a half a cup something to that effect that you would cook um that would be your serving so you wanna um so if you're gonna have it that way and i know some of the plates that i see sometimes and i've seen them even for exams they're like okay so this is my one serving of grains that one serving look like mount everest <laughs> That one serving is like like two weeks worth of grains and one plate. So if you're making something like a soup and you throw like a cup of amaranth in your soup, that is fine. That's like a serving, you know. And then if you have a slice of, if you make some pita bread to go with your soup to dip in it after that, that's cool. Or you're making a hearty soup and you make some dumplings to go in your soup. That's good, right? Um, but when we go, boy, and we make some... I said I I've seen before where I've seen some exam and I'm asking so is that the the amount of grains that was displayed on the table is that like for the whole family no that is a one person I'm like no <laughs> not that final exam you know it's just a, <laughs> it's a small amount that is a serving but because we're not eating that small amount we're eating tons of it then make sure you're doing tons of exercise to get that back off to because it is providing energy for you so if you're not using all that energy you don't need as much so i always say look make life simple don't put any grains with the breakfast have your grains that you know because when you say to somebody if you say to somebody have a big salad for dinner it's like oh what happened to my meat and my rice <laughs> right so i say look have your fruits for breakfast with your seeds, your nuts, and your plant-based milk, and then have your grains and your legumes with your with your um, dinner. So you have your salad first, and then you can have some rice and beans. Solve the problem. Then you know you only... You, I know it's maybe one type of grain, which would probably be rice, but I know nobody's having one serving. I know the plates that I see. And... <laughs> So you're you're actually getting about two and a half to three servings at one sitting. <laughs> so if we're doing two meals per day and we're putting some grains, a bowl of oats, we, we make some nice size bowl of oats and then with the bowl of oats, we're having two slices of bread because we're thinking two slices, one serving. Um, <laughs> and then for dinner, we're having rice that can serve two or three people and then we're gonna have a piece of bread on top of that as well and then some of us even in the night now at six o'clock we're like okay so let me have my last meal before before i go to bed we're having some crackers and some tea or something like that and we're like okay so my last meal is light the amount of serving of grains you've had for the day then you wonder how am i gaining weight and i'm a vegan and i'm eating healthy because you're eating too much carbs and you're not exercising as much junior mayo yeah. junior mayo your hand is up Okay. My hand is up. Yes. Um, I have a problem. Uh, tomorrow, uh, I'm going to work now. I'm leaving now and finishing at eight o'clock when you are starting tomorrow. Um, are you going to give me more hour? Because I arrive, I arrive here around nine nine fifteen. Okay. So what I would need for you to do, and for anybody else who's not able to um make the exam tomorrow, is 
video, not the whole exam, because I'm not going to sit down and watch a three hour video. All right. <laughs> 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 but I want you to take some snapshots, snapshots of your integral um, steps of your meal. And okay. at the end, when you've got your table nicely spread, I want yes. a little one minute video, right? Or three minutes. Let me see if I can find one. Um, let me see if I can find um, one video that I can share with you that I want to see. So I think I shared it in the group, isn't it? Did I not share a video in the group? Yes, you have shared. Yes, you right, have then, shared. If anyone can find it and just send it back so I can just share it on the screen. Okay. You, you do a little yeah. one to three minute video um, that I could, we could see what you have prepared, how it is nicely presented. And then you can say something about the food. Like, so I've got here, um, Indian rice with potatoes in it and saffron and um, cardamom and cumin and dates or, you know, whatever. You, you give a little description of the food and um, it tastes good. I want to hear that it tastes good or somebody says it tastes good. All right. And, um, and you baked it or you boiled it or you fried it or you put it outside in the sun to cook. Whatever way, right? <laughs> or it's 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 um uh, no bake, so I put it inside the fridge to chill. I need to hear a little bit of description of how. I don't need no full menu. I don't need no full recipe. I just okay. need, right. So I don't want to hear. Okay, and I put black pepper and I put salt, right? Even though you're not gonna put black pepper, I don't want to hear all this little bit of details. So okay. if if you do something, you present something to me like vegan um fried eggs or vegan um boiled eggs i just want to hear the main ingredients in it i don't want to hear okay so um i put a pinch of salt as well no i just want to hear okay so um this is vegan boiled eggs and i've made it from tofu and potato with agar agar and some turmeric and uh, i put it in a mold to set in the fridge full stop I don't want any more details about the eggs. That's the eggs on the on, on the on the plate. I've got also some um, vegan anchovy, and I used aubergines, and I soaked them overnight in salted water, and you know I then fry them down or something like that, or I bake them and wrap them in seaweed. Full stop. I don't need to hear all the other little integral details that you know. I've made some cheesecake and my cheesecake is made from, um, it's a cashew cream cheesecake or it's a chickpeas cheesecake and it's got carob in it. That's what gives it the chocolate color and it's a no bake cheesecake. So I put it in the fridge to set. I don't want to hear that it was set for 40 minutes or for two days because you didn't put enough agar agar in it. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> So just the, the 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 main thing. So somebody can say, okay, I can make um a cheesecake with agar agar, and you know, or I can make a chickpeas cheesecake. I've never heard of that. Let me go and ask Davina if I can come to the class, or let me go and ask her if she can teach me how to make that, and then you charge the person, okay? <laughs> so with your video, you need to give me enough information so I can understand what you have done. That that video as well you can use for promotional purposes and we also may use it for, for promotional purposes you may share your video and somebody may ask you can you teach me how to make this so you're gonna give them enough information so they know it is vegan but you're gonna leave out information because you want them to come to you all right so if they want to know more you can always say to them if they want to know more how they can learn how to make this or to do the course or if they would like you to bake one for them they can contact you all right <laughs> cool so you're gonna use that because you're gonna use it as a part also of your portfolio where you hear that and people will order stuff from you you will start getting business all right okay yeah, i'm leaving we're... now okay leaving thank now. you very much no problem and by the way for exam tomorrow for those who join in the exam it is a no speaking exam so you're just gonna log in and you're going to get started. So if you've got any questions to ask, you need to ask them today. Nobody will be um, 
talking to you tomorrow in the exam, right? Uh, because remember, other students will be able to hear and you will disrupt them. So when, when you finish, you just lock off. Oh, so when you're finished now, that's when um, you are going to display your food, your camera, and I'm going to look at it and we're going to feedback and stuff. And that time we sometimes go into a breakout room where we do you individually or, or maybe the others will be able to hear when you're getting the feedback, but that, that's how it goes. But don't come in and, oh, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. No. <laughs> um, when are we doing our theory? Oh, so Loy, Loy, could you tell the students how they can get their theory exam? Yes, yes, I can. So later on this oh. evening... I'm going to post the link in the class group and then all you'd have to do is click on it and you can complete the examination online and then just press submit. Okay, thank you. That's it. Okay, cool. Pretty easy, pretty, 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 pretty easy. Yeah. Um, and I hope everybody pass. You don't pass, don't stress. Okay, so as for the recipes that I know Myrtle is gonna kill between you and me for, um, <laughs> <laughs> this is it I know you're under pressure for the exam graduation is Sunday um, you will still get to graduate however you will not get the copy of the certificate until all the recipes have been handed in and you have until Wednesday next week to send them to Myrtle all right and I'm here sweating my ears are feeling hot as I'm telling you this <laughs> All right, so you have until Wednesday of next week to submit your recipes to Myrtle and then Loy will be able to send you your certificate. When you receive your certificate, we would like for you to print it and frame it. Okay, and we will see you at exam and then we will see you at graduation. Please share the graduation um, invitation to all your friends and family. Get he, she and the old lady to come. Invite your whole church to come to your graduation. It is your graduation and we will have we asked one student well i won't put any pressure on you now i'll put it in the group because maybe somebody has already been selected i can't even remember what everything that is happening things are happening so fast but you will your some of your dishes will be showcased and uh, at the graduation so you'll see them going up on the screen um your little one-liner if you have given in your one-liner as yet but in your in your exam video in your exam video in fact everybody even those who are present in the exam will still be asked to do the video you just make your little statement as well how the course has impacted your life and if you would recommend it something like that Bye, so, everyone. Davina. okay C can i just ask just to clarify for tomorrow uh, eight o'clock I just log in and just put the camera in the kitchen and do my exam work. yeah so we don't need to see okay, you we exam. need to see your workstation yes okay yeah and when I am done I you're you gonna show you us will... you're gonna say you're done you're gonna unmute yourself and say okay I'm finished okay I can yeah. say I'm finished yes yeah okay. yeah and you're gonna Thank show you. us we're gonna ask you now to show us the display and yeah Yes. Yeah. We, yeah. Good. All right. Cool. Thank you. No problem. Any questions? Junior, your hand is still up and you've got to go to work. So let me answer you quickly. Ask what you would like to ask. Um, I've just asked. Let me just put my hand down. <laughs> iPhone. iPhone. Is this Pat R? Sorry. This is Joanne. I, I... <laughs> All right. I'm very Joanne. sorry about that. I missed the whole class today. I apologize. I just couldn't get into my WhatsApp. It would just block me all morning. And I just got in like 10 minutes and then I got kicked out and I just came back in. Oh, so I missed gosh. everything. It takes me today to miss everything that I needed today. However, I know that the Lord will work it out. He will work so, it out. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Some people have posted. I don't know if anybody had sc screenshot the revision or 
some of the re I don't know, maybe some colleague can help you out with some of the things that was discussed. Oh, so we don't have a recording today. Oh yes, it is recorded as well. But you know mm -hmm. what happens sometimes is, for example, I may finish this class. Zoom does not release the recording immediately. Okay. So it will be saying processing sometimes for a day. It could be saying processing sometimes even longer. <laughs> um. So yeah. So I don't always have access to it immediately to post it in the group. But mm -hmm. I'm gonna go through. There are a few that I need to put the password and send to the group. So I will do that today. So if you need to go over anything, you can have them. Um, and I will still be going through the menus. Have you had your menu looked at as yet? Joanne? Yes, I, I, I was thinking of Italian. Oh, have one of my colleagues or myself approved your menu as yet? No, you didn't, because I did. I couldn't get into to send. Tell it me what you. is your menu. Tell me. You shouldn't be <laughs> thinking off now. You should have that menu written out. <laughs> I have. I have it written out. Um, okay. I'm having four guests for lunch for supper. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so the table will be four guests, and wow, uh, we will be. I will be entertaining them with a glass of sparkling grape and apricot wine. And uh, about that, an hour. That must be had at least half hour before the meal. Okay. Yes. And about an half an hour to an hour, we will be dealing with a leek soup with uh, some rolls. Leek and, and sorrow? Some rolls. Rolls. Oh, rolls. Okay. Yes. And homemade butter. Cool. And pardon me? I said cool. And then we will be having... Um, so what is the roll made from? Is that whole grain or? Whole... It's made from spelt, spelt flour. Okay, cool. Good. Spelt You're flour. incorporating your ancient grain. Yes. And we will be having some, a salad. Oh, I mean, it's, it's a green salad. So the salad is made up of arugula, romaine, just green leafy salad with red pepper and a red pepper dressing. Cool. That sounds good. But your so, green salad is normally green, all right? Right. It's all green. <laughs> just green. And the reason why we take green is because our breaded chicken slash tofu will be um, tomato basil toppings. So, mm, sounds so good. that will be... So that will be, um, and then our dessert will be an espresso sundae. Woo! Coffee espresso sundae. Yes, sounds good. So that will be the, the, the focus meal for my four guests. All right, all right, enjoy. So I'm hearing the beans, I'm hearing the grains, I'm hearing, where is the beans? We 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 dropping some in the soup. <laughs> I like I that. Love that. That, was fast, that was a fast, quick comeback. That was a quick fix. <laughs> oh, it's not regular coffee. It's not. It's not. <laughs> I love that one, Joanne. <laughs> well done. <laughs> good save, good save. Yeah. <laughs> She's smart, man. Right? Fast, fast, fast and quick is the word, fast. Yes. And quick. <laughs> <laughs> the menu sounds good. Enjoy, all right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right. Um, Cody, have I reviewed your menu as yet? Galaxy. Oh, James. sorry, it's Elaine. That's why I'm asking whether or not you received mine because I sent everything yesterday. So I don't know if you've received it or not. Um, you sent it by email? Not... Yeah, I sent everything by email in one document. Okay, all right. Maybe I have... I've responded to some of them, you know, especially those that came through yesterday. It's those that have been coming through on my today that I haven't been able to answer to as yet. Well, it might be that it didn't go through to you. So that's why I need someone to check for me. So Tell I can me quickly what you sent then. 
what I sent. What in terms of my menu or yeah? Everything. Tell me your menu. Yeah, your menu. I'm doing Thai Thai salad. I'm doing masaman curry, and I'm doing I can't remember the name of the dessert, but it's a um, it's a coconut pineapple dessert thingy. No, I didn't <laughs> receive that as yet. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's all it's, it's all in the list of um, it's it's all mixed up with the recipe. So. so oh. Right, if you done... All right. Give me an overview of your Thai salad. Uh, what, what what is your what dressing? You're doing a dressing to go with your salad. Yeah, there's a dressing as well. Okay, what what's the main ingredients in your Thai salad? Hold on, I have to get my list. <laughs> um, you can speak to someone else, and I have to go and get. All my right, list. so Galaxy J Seven, Joanne, take your hand down. <laughs> Zoily, have I responded to your email as yet? Have I responded to your 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 exam because you've sent me billions of emails? <laughs> you're you're muted. You're muted. Yes. Sorry, did I use the wrong email address then for my uh, work for my portfolio? Because I'm. No, you haven't. I've received them. I've received them, but. I have not been able to go through all of them. I ha I have I'm going through your list, so I've gone through some, but not everything as yet. And that's where I, I stopped when I had to run out the house to 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 get to Spanish. I've just sent it on your phone. You just sent it on my phone. Okay, yes, you send it to the group or personal. By the way, if you send it to the group, you actually get through faster. I'm telling you. Oh, okay. Yeah. So which one should I go into now, Zoe? Your yeah, that one mine my email because i said okay so starter sweet potato and carrot soup with cashew cream sounds amazing main meal sweet potato and carrot soup makes a beautiful color right and then i would love to see the cream um even though you're gonna probably put some cream in it to cook it i'd love to see the cream um decorating garnishing the top some swirls or something you've got as well a bean salad peas edami beans okay broad beans red onion dill what's sat on rocket okay sat on a bed of rocket okay rocket leaves with olive oil all right great what other dressing oh, dressing. so with this salad this bean salad you can make up a dressing with the olive oil mix herb a little bit of honey um some garlic and some onion powder or pulverize them or something like that but maybe some powder and you shake that up um, and lemon as well lemon as well you can shake that up um, nicely until it sort of emulsifies and you can use that on the salad like this chicken tofu skewers that sounds good what else are, what else besides a tofu will be on the skewer okay. and trifle sounds good to me this is looking good all right, so I'm seeing your beans and I'm seeing where's the grains? Is it tofu, not grains? Tofu is a bean. Should I uh, put some quinoa, quinoa on the on the beans? Yes, yeah, you could put some quinoa in your salad. Yes, yeah, so your bean with quinoa salad. All right, that's that's good. Anybody else sending their quickly to the group? Or if you just send it to me and just tell me now and I look through it. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pray. So for those who want to leave the class, who those have already been reviewed, and um I'm gonna pray. So so those who want to leave can go. Can I do that? Yes. And those who need theirs to be looked at now, just send it so I do it. Loy, can you pray for us, please? Or Boosie. I haven't heard Boosie all day. Is Boosie in the class? I'm not sure. But should I pray? Or yes, you? please. Okay. Father, we just want to thank you so much for this wonderful session. And we thank you for this time we've had together. Be with everyone now as we go to make our preparations and just to probably enjoy some time with our families. Thank you for the many blessings that you've given us. And I pray that you'll bring us all back tomorrow morning in our right mind and alert 
and ready to have a, a beautiful experience creating a meal that will be pleasant, not just to the eyes, but wonderful to the bellies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. All right, amen. fantastic. So now you, I'm going to... Can you please repeat that uh, the, all the dressing for me, please? I didn't get all the ingredients. So with your dressing, your olive oil, with your lime juice, you can put some herbs. What what culture are you going after? I don't even know. Huh? What your name? I don't know. You don't know. Um, sweet potato and carrot soup. That sounds <laughs> British. Well, all right. Just put some mixed herbs. Yeah, just use a, use a mixed herbs. So your olive oil, your lemon juice, your mixed herbs. And you want to put some salt in it as well. You can put a little bit of honey if you want. And um, you want to shake that up nicely until it emulsifies. And you can put that. And you can put some onion powder and garlic powder in the, in the salad dressing. Right? You could even put a bit of cayenne pepper as well in the dressing shake that up nicely and mix it in with your your bean salad with your ancient grain so whatever ancient grain you want to use let's use up one of them here quinoa would look nice especially the the colored quinoa you know sometimes you have like this three or quinoa but any 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 ancient grain because you you do this tomorrow so whatever ancient grain you have to use you use or you make some bread okay for the soup for the soup or for the salad whatever <laughs> is it like naan bread is that okay yeah yeah that would be nice yeah i'll do that I'll do um the other thing i'm i didn't see is your seeds you could throw some seeds in the salad or if you make like naan bread, you could probably make some pesto. Or you could throw some some pumpkin seeds on your carrot, on your soup, on the top of your soup. Or your cashew cream. When you're making your cashew cream, you could make cashew and sunflower cream. So you could soak both the cashew and the sunflower and, and add it in. And, and use it, you know, together. Um, it, it works because sunflower makes a nice cream as well. So I'm throw I'm going to the group now and I'm are you seeing the group? Are you seeing in the group? Yes. Yeah. Okay, all right. So what's that? Um chat. Somebody I think sent us a conversion chat. All right. I'm scrolling up. I'm trying to scroll up to see. I'm go I'm leaving Sabina. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Okay, no problem. Okay, so this is this is from where I stopped today. Um, Davina, to go. Sorry, I'll, I'll um. Yeah, I'll man. If you have to go, that's fine. Just just jump out. Anybody who needs to go, you're free to go. What I want now is for those whose menus have not been reviewed and approved as yet, please stay back and show me your menus now. Um, Enox exam menu Italian cuisine start a courgette roll ups with vegan cottage cheese, woo, walnuts, roasted peppers with olive oil, and now Enoch, I know where I'm coming for dinner. Pizza main course. Well, the salad is the main course, which sounds like the starter. Pizza base with home ground organic wheat and spell flour sounds good with tomato and mozzarella salad with pistachio nuts and basil so that's on top of your pizza base will you be using any um pizza sauce or tomato paste on your pizza yes okay good and then you're gonna have your vegan tomato and mozzarella um slice up on top of that with some pistachio nuts and some basil leaves no salad salad is going on the side pizza okay so, is by itself and then salad on the side all right so the pizza what is on the pizza then? Tell me. Tomato sauce mot and mozzarella. Oh, so you're making a margarita pizza. Yes. So put that margarita pizza. Cool. Margarita pizza with 
Salad. Okay, so that's your main. Your mm -hmm. salad. I, th I think I think you're doing toppings. Are you not doing top? Are you doing not doing toppings? You're not going to pizza. He doesn't like, need to um, do any topping. He's got olive, a lot of stuff here, drinking. man. Okay. He's got it's a good menu. Much, he has to make too much cheese now. It's, there's already cheese in the. <laughs> yeah, giving again. <laughs> <laughs> oh my days. There's already cheese in. There's already cheese in the starter cottage cheese and then there's 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 cheese in the mozzarella salad and then cheese again on the pizza well let me look for the beans in the menu in the salad okay all right <laughs> as i see your seeds all right your menu looks nice so double triple carob coconut raw cheesecake listen to me man i want to come to enoch for dinner <laughs> enoch your menu looks um, like your menu gets me excited it's pretty rich um and we probably shouldn't be eating all of this in one go but it's gorgeous it's sumptuous so i love what you've got going on there I'm looking for what about seeing. time, Sister Davina? 8 a.m. is way too early for cooking for us. Well, it is exam time. You don't have a fridge? No, we do the, have the fridge. The, I, <laughs> the idea is after you come out of the kitchen on Sabbath, you don't have to go back in there. Yeah, but 8 a.m. for us. Hey yes and the idea is also to give people time to get to go and do their 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 cleaning up their house and do the rest of things on sabbath i understand i was just wondering whether anything else could be could be done for us 9 a.m nine is better that's just an hour difference but anyway if it is better for you that's fine it doesn't mean that we're gonna stay with you all day though until you're finished yeah i understand all right all right um we we will open the room for four hours though so all right um next who's next i only see enoch's menu is there anybody else who needs your well done you know good menu i need yeah get the beans in i see your seeds i see your grains you know your stone ground is it stone ground or home ground it's home ground we ground the flour in the blender oh really mm -hmm. super i love that mm -hmm. all right um anyone else i can only see enoch's menu why are they not coming through it takes time to type um, take a picture if you've got it written out just take a picture Take a picture, take a picture, take a picture, take a picture. Or just tell me what it is then in that case. Tell me what is the menu and um, that will be fine if you tell me. Oh boy. Have the cat caught your tongue or something? There's still 22 people on the class. If you if I have reviewed your menu already, then you can you can leave, please, because I, I want only those who who I need to review their menu. So Enoch, are you sending us that chocolate recipe? I wanna give that a try. I've just put it on the group, Davina. I right, cool, cool, cool. Thank you. You put it on the group. All right. I thought that was that was the chocolate recipe. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we've got Elaine. Spicy Thai salad with cucumber, red cabbage. Wow, sweet peppers, carrots, cashew dressing. That sounds good. Bear one thing in mind with the red cabbage, right? When you cut it, it will start bleeding. So if you don't want the whole salad being red and ugly, you mix the other things first and then add the red cabbage last, all right? Yes, thanks. Yeah, all right. Um, that sounds good. With cashew dressing, that sounds amazing. Lime and ginger sriracha. Ooh, you're making sriracha sauce? No, I'm not making it. But I've already kept it. 
right, all right, all right, all right. I get you, I get you. All right. I've, Mama, made, all the, I've made my own fish fish um, sauce. That's why you can't normally have Thai food because it's got fish seasoning in it. So I've made my own Thai fish seasoning. Oh, superb. All right, Mama, Masamam. I would love to uh, uh, share your Thai recipe, your fish recipe with me, please. Mom, what is the Mama Samam curry? I, I don't know that one. It's Mas a Thai Sam curry. It's usually done with beef or chicken. Okay. And what, what, what curry? What? Tell me more about the curry. I know Thai green. I know Thai red. Yeah, it's a, and it's I make my curry. own version of Thai yellow. Is it done yeah, the same the, way with the lemongrass, yeah, the, the coconut, and a little yeah. sugar? And okay, the, all right, cool. The gal gal and yeah, and the Thai basil. Okay. All right. Um, somebody just sent some stuff in. What happened? I I just got kicked from the recipe I was looking at. All right. Let's go back down. All right, so Elaine, that's it. You're, you're pine up a coconut jelly. Ooh la la. So is that like the jelly that um, the one that I did for the the launch? I want to say yes because it might not come out right, but yes, it's supposed no, to be. No, it will come out right. Believe you me, it will come out right. Just make sure the agar agar is dissolved. So once you've seen on the spoon that the liquid, the grains, it's coming up without grains. Then you know it has been dissolved. And you pour it in your mouth and uh, make sure you always put a bottom layer of the agar, the mixture first, so that you don't have your fruits exposed. And then you put your pineapples, you drop your pineapples in. And I don't know, are you having dices or slices of jelly, cubes of coconut jelly in it? or No, it's on top. Water. The coconut is on top. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Well, do your thing. And if you have other colors other than just pineapple, that would be pretty. But even as a pineapple, is going to be gorgeous. I would love to taste that when it's finished. I may even make myself some. I've got loads of mangoes. Even though I may just make myself Oh, some. we can swap. You can send me the mangoes. <laughs> ah! <laughs> it's mango season in Jamaica. I've got loads of mangoes, yeah. All right, anything else? Anything else? Anyone else? Send me theirs, please. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> um, Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. All right. Let's stop sharing the screen because only two people. Margaret? Margaret? You've already seen mine, I think, in the um. Yeah, and I, I think I've responded. You could go, Genevieve. You could go. You could go. Go and start prepping for tomorrow. Magali, Fiona, have I seen your menu for tomorrow? Yes, Davina, you already saw my menu. Okay, you can go then. Jump out. All right, then. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. See. Go a bit late because. Eight o'clock is three o'clock for me in the morning. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, it's too early for me to rise to start cooking. Okay, all right. So I may just do the video that you suggested. Okay, cool. No problem. Liz? Did you say Fiona? Yes, I did say Fiona. Someone else responded for me? No, they responded for themselves. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm trying to something directly just now. Okay. All right. Let me just go on that. Do I need to place it in the class? Huh? Do I need to place it in the class? No, in no, class? no, no, no. Let me go on it and see. The thing is, it hasn't come through, though. It's in the chat. It's directly to you in the chat. Oh, in the class. Yes. Okay, let me go back. No, in, in this Zoom. In this Zoom. 
Ah! Oh dear. So many chats. 42 messages in the chat. I wonder if anybody has put theirs in there. Um, millet salad, curry chickpeas, banana bread. Cool. Um, so millet, that's your ancient grain. Your beans, your curry chickpeas. Your banana bread. So... Banana bread with lots of nuts. Okay. All right. Um, let me hear about your curry. Oh, that's um, cooked down with turmeric and coconut milk and different types of spices. Okay. And, and, huh? and seasonings. Have you done this one before? You mean the, the chickpeas? Chickpea curry. Yes. Ah. We always ask for you to challenge yourself. Do something you've never done before. Go outside of your culture. This is very Jamaican. Your chickpea curry. Chickpea and sweet potato curry. Chickpea curry. Banana bread. Very very Caribbean as well. Your, your only new thing here is the millet. Okay. All right. Are you able to revive your menu? Yeah, well, I'm, because my best friend died yesterday, I'm a little bit out of it because she was she has been sick and I've been dealing with all of that. So oh, I'm wow. much out of it. So I just put something that You could just I get out of the way quickly. All right. Can I make a suggestion that won't give you too much work but will, you know, make it a little bit different? That very same chickpea curry, very same yellow curry, you could make it into a thigh yellow curry. Fire yellow. Thai, T-H-A-I, Thai curry. Oh, so, you mean with the fever grass? Yes, with the fever, fever grass, a little bit of sweetener in it. Um, I don't know, if you, you're not going to get galaganga out here, but maybe a little piece of ginger could be added to it. As okay, well. I have fever grass in my yard, so that's just fine. Superb, 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 superb. So turn it into that. Um, and I'll put the, what the, the thing on the top of the banana bread. What's that? Aquafaba icing, whipped cream. Yes, the aquafaba icing. Now we're talking. I like the challenge. Go, girl. And you can sprinkle some sesame seeds on it when you're finished. Maybe on one okay. side. Or in the salad. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank that's you. fine. And you're having some greens in your salad, yeah, or some lettuce or something on the side. Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna put parsley and celery and carrot and cool. Sounds like a powerhouse salad. Good for the kidneys. Yes, and I'll put some um seeds like chia seeds and. No, maybe I'll put that in the banana bread. All right, cool. Fiona, the menu looks nice. Um, sorry about the loss of your friend. Uh, it's horrible times, tough times we're living in, and the traveling restrictions and everything. So sorry about the loss of your friend. And I hope the Lord comfort and heal you as well as the family. Thank you. Yeah. All right, you can jump out now. Anyone else? Melva, have I done your menu? Galaxy J7 Star. Yes, you. Have you have I done your menu? You haven't done mine yet. Um Davina, it's Melva. All right, Melva, tell me. Galaxy, I need um, a name for you. Name. Galaxy, can you rename yourself, please, to a name so I can call you by your name? Yeah? Walk away. You... Oh, she don't even know I'm talking to her. Anyway, go ahead, Melva. Okay. I, I haven't decided completely on, on... I haven't got a final decision on what I'm going to use. But, okay. Um, it was going to be probably carrot and ginger soup with some seeds on top and maybe a bit of coconut cream. Sounds good. 
I can't decide whether I should do um, a gado gado, it's like a um, um, tofu, fried tofu in corn flour and seasoning, and then in a gado gado sauce, which is like what's a gado gado sauce? It's like roasted almonds with some herb seasoning, and then that'll be on the side. Mm. And um, an Asian salad. I'm not at home at the moment, so I'm just trying to remember it off, off my head. So the Asian salad has carrot, um, cabbage, and it has rice noodles, and it has some seeds in it as well. And then for dessert, I was looking at a, a vegan tiramisu. Wow. Share me that recipe, the vegan tiramisu, please. I will too. Love a tiramisu. Yeah, and you don't have no amaretto in it, right? Sorry? <laughs> you don't have no amaretto in it. No, there's no amaretto in it. All right, that's um, good. What are you going to use instead of the amaretto? Something like molasses? I'm not sure, probably. <laughs> in, what's oh. in, the, um, in the tofu? Yes. In the, um, sorry, in the desserts um no i haven't got molasses i'm going to use um th the plan was maybe coconut sugar or i'm trying to get away from sugar so i was thinking maybe i'll use um agave but i'm not sure how that would work out because i've never used it in there before so i've also got coconut sugar to use in there um i haven't got any molasses i wasn't i don't think i was planning on putting molasses in there but um, okay. i might do but uh, yeah, definitely not a uh, uh, marriage. Got that in. So Melva, this recipe, have you done this before? How many times have you done this very same recipe? Is often? Which one? Your, did, your it, menu, your I've menu. The, I've made it before. Yeah, I've done the, the gado gado before. I've done it a couple of times before. Um, It was a, a recipe I got in Australia. So I used to cook that every, um, at least twice a week and um the the soup i've done quite often and the um so where's the challenge where's the challenge where's the challenge we have to challenge ourselves do something that you haven't done before okay. do something different okay. how about doing um I'll, I'll find go and look at um chinese sesame chicken or sweet and sour chicken and do that with the tofu do a sweet and sour chicken or a sesame yeah. chicken with the tofu. Your soup, add some more to your soup. It's normally carrot and ginger, you say, right? Yeah, it's probably carrot. I'm, I'm not definite sure because I've also got butternut squash, so I was thinking I might make do try and do something different. How about you making um, a cream of butternut that? squash soup? Yeah, that could do. Yeah, cream of butternut squash soup um your sesame chicken or sweet and sour chicken um and what can I grain use, i can use this i can use the soya chunks of sweet and sour chicken yeah you could use the tofu as well okay but the soya chunks makes okay. an amazing sweet and sour chicken okay because i've got that and i did tell my son i would do some um, sweet and sour chicken but um the family is gonna absolutely love it make enough okay yeah okay yeah um right, I'll, I'll change. and dessert what did you say was dessert again it's uh, um a term of soup but I've, I've not made that before all right um so i want a piece of that go ahead so okay. the menu sounds good and you make a salad all right yeah the, it's going to be an asian coleslaw um it's got cabbage and rice noodles and some seeds in it i'm looking forward to that all right, um, Paulette, Galaxy 7J Star. I don't know who is Galaxy 7J Star. Anybody knows? The person won't even say anything. Oh, boy. All right, Paulette and Liz. I'm not cooking. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Liz? Um, yeah. 
you you have done your exam already from the last course okay yeah i'm just sitting in in it yeah and yeah to reinforce things day. that's fine liz yes paulette jump out of the meeting then man jump out so the the, the group can get smaller so i can see who needs the support <laughs> liz liz margaret Nadia created for you. I'm going to remove you. We're finished. You've done your exam from last year. Last class. All right. Um, Liz, I'm removing you. You're not saying anything. Message me. Margaret. 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 All right, Margaret, I'm removing you. You're not saying anything either. All right, this galaxy person. Okay, I'm removing this galaxy. I have no clue who is galaxy. Sister Davina. Yes, dear. I I was to put a, a little pasta supposed to go with my um. It's a it's a ozu's, I which mean it's like the little pasta like rice. Okay, that's have, Japanese Thai. It's it's Italian. Oh, it's it's pasta that looks like rice. It's you mean small. um risotto. It's, no, it's smaller than that. I think it's Ozoa, something, something like that. Oh, I don't. I'm not familiar with that one. Tell me about yeah. it. If I don't, if I don't find it in, like, I'm thinking, I want to put something spelt. Can I, can I, um, can I change the pastor and put something spelt? Or can I, can I just? If you change Wait, a pasta, I would say you I put another pasta. pasta. Because I have the bread. All right, tell me the menu again. Oh, I have to get my paper. It's it's serving a glass of wine first. Mm -hmm. And then I have breaded chicken, well, tofu. Okay, yeah. I change it to tofu and uh, with tomato basil topping. Mm -hmm. And uh, that would have gone with some lemon um, fatata ozo. It is the pasta. Mm -hmm. So you make the pasta and you put some Parmesan cheese inside and with lemons and parsley. With a bit of olive oil and garlic, of course. So you want to change the pasta to a bread, you say? Well, I was having a little soup with the bread. That's fine then. So then I could just, uh, can I replace my, my pasta with some rapini? What's rapini? Rapini, now? rapini is, is a vegetable. It, it's like broccoli, but it have long stem. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's okay. I call them baby broccoli. I know it's, it's very sexy. It's a cross between the broccoli and the asparagus. Right, wow. so it's 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 bitter, so I feel it will go well with the basil topping. So if I put the chicken and my um garlic, I could put some garlic. I could make a garlic um rapini, olive oil and garlic. Instead of cutting it up, I can do it whole. Mm -hmm. But that can't. Re you could have that, but that can't replace pasta. Pasta is pasta. But then I have the bread already on the soup. Okay, that's fine. So in, so instead of having the the pasta because I having the bread already. So you have some cooked vegetables instead. That's perfect. Right, with a big green salad. And, and the dessert? The, the dessert is express on express uh express Okay, yeah, express Sunday. Express Sunday. I'm looking forward to that. So what's going to be the cream? It will be I will make a cashew cream. Mm-hmm. And I Sounds will put nice. it on top with some carob chips. Carob mm -hmm. chocolate. 
Ooh, and some that's nuts. Good. Sounds good to me. So All right, so a, um, a substitute of coffee at the bottom. Coffee alternative, yeah. Mm. That's that's fine. That's good. Um, looking forward to that tomorrow. So we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. You you want me to remove you or are you gonna leave? Okay. Oh I'm exhausted. It's over. <laughs> Ladies, Myrtle and Loy. Yes. You're still recording. Okay, thank you for that. Stop it. And YouTube.